Our story begins with our protagonist shopping at the grocery store, while the news reports to everyone that there have recently been many cases of animal injuries in Z-City. Citizens are urged to avoid going out at night, but relevant authorities are now investigating. So, they shouldn't panic. Dozens of people have been infected with influenza by an unknown virus in X-City. X-Media will continue to follow up and report the situation. But our protagonist was just busy looking at the tuna, thinking that there is no harm in stocking up on canned foods while busy listening on his earphones. One of the women in the store told her friend that the old man of the Lai family, who is usually in good health, had an emergency a few days ago and died instantly. The woman's friend asked if it could be because of influenza too, and the woman replied that it was right, and the old man couldn't even last two days. The woman also told her friend that the world was really not peaceful those days. A moment later, he put his groceries in his truck and checked carefully to make sure he had brought seeds, instant meals, frozen foods, meat, daily necessities, snacks, canned food, and other stuff. He thought he just had to add some more diesel, and he was done. He also knew that he must hurry home to cook for Hannon because there is still the deer he hunted in the morning to deal with. While he was driving home, his girlfriend called him, and he answered. She called him Tian and asked if he had considered her previous proposal. He replied that he could find a job that allowed him to hold his head high in front of outsiders, to which she replied, okay. But he told his girlfriend that he was not going to send Lai Han to an orphanage. Lai Han angrily told him that she was not related to him by blood and he shouldn't talk to her about marriage if he is going to bring a child with him. He still told her that Lai Han is his sister and an important family member, which made his girlfriend upset, and she asked him why she should raise such a child as her daughter for nothing. She also told him that she has suffered enough with him, and if he doesn't take her seriously, they shouldn't get married, and they should break up. He replied, all right, and was about to say something, but something appeared in front of him and he hit it with his truck, making him cuss in shock. He was forcefully pushed to the front, and he knew that the thing was actually rushing straight in front of his car, making him wonder if it was a dog but he noticed that it looked like a sheep. The sheep stood up, even though it was severely injured, but its eyes were red, making him shocked, knowing that it was hit on the head, but it was still alive. The sheep walked away from the road and went into the bush. He just looked at it in silence and turned his gaze back to the road, thinking that he should forget it because it was better to leave it there and not report it to the traffic police. A moment later, he arrived at their home and began to take out the groceries from his truck. Then, someone called him brother, making him look back and see a little girl with two dogs running toward him. The little girl was amazed that he bought a lot of stuff and told him that she also came to help move them. He gave her a small plastic bag of food, and they started walking toward their home. She told him that she had accomplished all the tasks he had given her, including adding fodder to the cowshed, changing the water, and watering the crops. She also mentioned that she was so tired and needed to eat stew made by her big brother to feel better. He agreed and suggested making some carrot and venison stew for her hungry stomach, to which she agreed. They continued talking, making him smile. However, one of the dogs started eating grass on the side, and she gently tapped its head while calling it Zao by to let it know it can't eat the crops. Then they continued to walk happily. On the side, there were sheep footprints, and the cow, busy eating grass in its fence, was looking at them with red eyes. Later, she told him that she had never seen a solar eclipse before and asked if it was true that the sky would turn completely dark like in the evening. Meanwhile, the radio informed them that the most spectacular total solar eclipse of the century was just around the corner, as promised. She happily exclaimed that the stew was delicious while eating and mentioned that not only had her big brother's hunting skills improved, but his cooking skills had also gotten better. He told her that it wouldn't turn completely dark, just that the sun would get darker, so she needed to wear the glasses he gave her to see it. The radio announced that the countdown would begin. When the radio began counting down, she pointed outside and asked him what was happening. He stood up in shock, looking at the dark blue moon outside, and when the countdown reached zero, their electricity disappeared. She fearfully asked him what was wrong with the power outage and said it was so cold. Suddenly, the dog started barking continuously, and the radio emitted an unknown loud noise. Then she fearfully pointed to somewhere and told her big brother to look at it, which he did, and he quickly came out of their home, surprised to see that it was snowing. She asked him what was with the blizzard in the middle of summer, but he just told her to go back to the house quickly because he would lock up the cattle and sheep. He assured her that he would be right back and told Zio Bai to stay back and take good care of Hanhan, to which it barked in agreement. Hanhan worriedly told him to hurry up because it was cold outside, and he reassured her not to worry. He then called the other dog, Zio Hai, to come with him. 
He began to walk in the stormy blizzard with Sayo Hai and asked if it was alright. Suddenly, the dark moon shone brightly, momentarily blinding him, and then it lit up like a sun in the stormy blizzard. He looked up at the shining dark moon in the sky, wondering how it could be. Suddenly, Zayo Hai noticed something while he was lost in thought about the strange plants, blizzard, and the sun. Zayo Hai barked angrily at something and jumped behind him. He dodged a bull behind him in shock. Zayo Hai attacked the bull behind him, causing it to turn around and see Zayo Hai attacking. He immediately ran away, knowing his compound bow should be nearby, and fortunately, he spotted it right away. The bull threw Zayo Hai away, and he aimed at it in frustration. However, he noticed a blue target light in front of him, which left him confused and wondering about its origin. He released the arrow, which flew toward the bull and hit it in the face, making it scream in pain. He felt excited that he had hit the bull and thought it should be dead now, but the bull didn't go down. Instead, it charged furiously toward him, causing him to panic and shout that it wasn't dead yet. As he reached for more arrows, he realized he was out of ammunition. The system displayed the message that the number of ammunition was zero and the number of living bodies within range was three, which left him momentarily confused. However, he understood he needed to act quickly. When he tried to grab an arrow, he couldn't believe that he was truly out. Suddenly, the bull appeared in front of him and struck him, throwing him away. He coughed in pain while Zao Hai tried to pull him away. He looked at Zio Hai, who was barking and pointing toward their house, making him realize that Zio Hai was signaling that the danger was coming from their house. Since the bull had mutated, Hanhan was not safe anymore. On the other hand, Zio Bai was growling at Hanhan in anger, making Hanhan ask what was wrong with it. Zio Bai continued to growl and lunged at her. Fortunately, Tian Ran arrived in time and kicked Zio Bai away from her. He was frustrated that even Zio Bai had changed. He told Hanan that he would take her to the safe house, where she should hide and not come out because it was still dangerous outside. Hanan expressed concern for Zio Bai, but he explained that Zio Bai was dangerous now. She should listen to her big brother and never come out. He ran outside, holding Hanan in his arms, and headed for the farmhouse. He did his best to reach their farmhouse, but then the system popped up in front of him, confirming that it wasn't an illusion. He saw that the number of living bodies within range was four. He placed Hanan inside the farmhouse and urged her to get inside quickly, emphasizing that no matter what happened, she should not come out and should trust in her brother. The system showed him that the number of living bodies within range was five. When he slammed the door shut, Zio Bai attacked him from behind, causing him to growl and kneel in pain. Hanhan worriedly called her brother inside, and Zio Hai attacked Zio Bai, making him praise Zio Hai. He ran away while instructing Zio Hai, who was defending against Zio Bai, to hold on because he would come to its aid after dealing with the bull chasing him. He grabbed the nearby axe, turned around, and faced the bull. The bull attacked, but he jumped to the side, causing the bull to hit the tree behind him. The bull's horn got stuck in the tree, and he raised his axe to attack it, telling it to go to hell. However, Zio Bai bit him on the neck. He was worried that Zio Hai was killed, knowing that he couldn't die yet. Then the bull freed itself and pierced its horn into his side, making him cough up blood. Suddenly, he heard something continuously, which annoyed him, and he wondered why it was so noisy. The system showed him that the apocalypse survival game was matching, but he couldn't see it clearly and reminded himself not to fall asleep. Many system pop-ups appeared in front of him, making him wonder about the revolving door, and he was irritated by the noise. He told the system to let him deal with the two beasts in front of him first and shut up. The system revealed that he was a player named Lai Tian Ran but he was preoccupied with telling the animals around him to get away. He slowly let go of the axe, wishing that at least Hanhan would survive. Then the system signaled a successful match in the apocalypse survival game. Suddenly, he found himself submerged underwater while hearing the system announcing that the apocalyptic game had successfully loaded. He was identified as player Lai Tian Ran, and the shelter was a poorly managed manor level 1. The shelter's level 1 skill reward was the Eye of Truth, his class was B, and the points required to upgrade to fortress level were 8 million. Then he saw a shining light, which made him wake up and return to reality, leaving him surprised that he was still alive. He immediately sat up, fully aware that he had been pierced by the bull's horn. He noticed that the torn clothes and bloodstains were still there, but all his wounds had disappeared, leaving him wondering about the mysterious circumstances and the whereabouts of the bull and Zio Bai. As he recalled being pierced by the bull's horn and the pain he felt, he massaged his head. Looking to his side, he was shocked to see the bull cut in half, and on the other side, Zio Bai lay motionless. He wondered what had happened after he lost consciousness because the injuries inflicted on the animals were beyond human capability. Suddenly, he remembered the sensation of being possessed by the system and felt an electrical surge through his body. The system indicated that his status had been activated, and he punched Zio Bai, who had been biting his neck, sending it flying toward the wall. 
Then he grabbed the axe on the ground and attacked the bull with it. The bull screamed in pain, but he stared at it unconsciously while his own wounds slowly healed. He leaped toward the bull and swung his axe at it once again. A blinding light hit his eyes, bringing him back to reality, but he was overwhelmed by intense pain throughout his body, causing him to scream and catch his breath to calm down. He realized that he had died once but was brought back to life, and the ability to heal and create explosions was not his own. It was likely the result of the so-called system, which was difficult for him to accept as reality. The system displayed that the shelter had been successfully bound, and the mall points had been activated. Beginner's rewards had been distributed, and players were requested to check them. He was puzzled, looking at the messages, but then he felt another electric shock, and the system revealed that the first round of the destruction season had arrived. There were still 30 days until the next round of the destruction season, during which natural disasters would occur, and the shelter was the only haven he could rely on. His mission was to survive the game and make his shelter the strongest possible castle, making him wonder if the system's information was directly implanted in his brain. Realizing that it was the first round of the destruction season, he understood that this was just the beginning, and the first round had poisoned the land that humans depended on for survival. This made him wonder how the second round would unfold. He approached Xiaobai and noticed that it had passed out. Recalling what the system had mentioned, he knew that both Xiaobai and the bull should have mutated after accidentally consuming radiation poison plants. He decided to put Xiaobai on his back, knowing that after the mutation, their bodies had been strengthened, making them extremely ferocious. His first priority was to tie up Xiaobai and place it in a cage to prevent it from causing harm. He walked back into the farmhouse, thinking he should check on Hanan first. Descending the stairs, he tried to turn on the light but realized that the power system hadn't been restored yet, and there was no signal. The communication system also appeared to be down, but he knew he could handle it with a diesel generator. He looked around, wondering where Hanhan was and why there was no movement. Then, he spotted Hanhan's little feet behind a box, lying motionless, which caused him to panic and call her name. He hurriedly picked her up, asking her what was wrong. Fortunately, the system displayed that she was merely sleeping, which relieved him. When Hanhan woke up, she felt something holding her and saw that it was her big brother. He asked her why she hadn't spread out the mattress and instead slept directly on the floor. She replied that she was obedient and had been waiting for him downstairs, but then there was a big white light, and she couldn't remember anything. She asked if he was okay, and he assured her not to worry because everything had been resolved. She inquired about Xiaobai's whereabouts, and he explained that Xiaobai was injured, so they couldn't meet for the time being. He suggested she should stay there and sleep because he had some matters to attend to, to which she agreed. After putting Han in to sleep, he stood up and walked away. Moments later, he realized that there were no more mutant domestic animals around, which led him to wonder about the differences between the system and online games. He examined the beginner's bonus on the system, thinking it might include special weapons or skills, but it appeared to be insufficient, and he couldn't start the game until accumulating more points. He noticed a question mark on the system and clicked it, discovering that the common currency in this system was points. He also learned that the seed item could be planted in poisoned land, indicating it was expensive, which disappointed him as he considered himself poor. He understood that he could only check the stockpile of supplies at home, as those in direct contact with the ground had likely been contaminated in various ways. With the network disconnected, he believed it would take some time to recover and he didn't have an optimistic outlook on the situation outside. After some contemplation, he remembered the bull and Xiaobai, leading him to conclude that all sources of pollution needed to be dealt with. He proceeded to burn down their animal's house, and he watched it burn to the ground. He returned to the farmhouse, opened one of its doors, turned on the lights, and found a shelf filled with various weapons. He selected a gun, concealed it in his jacket, left the communication radio near the sleeping Hanhan, and walked outside the farmhouse. As he drove away in his truck, he noticed that he was being chased by mutated animals both in the air and on the land. He grew frustrated that these creatures were all attracted to him. He took out his gun, planning to eliminate them quickly, but then an army truck appeared behind him and opened fire, leaving him surprised. The army truck maneuvered to block his path, forcing him to panic and halt his truck to avoid a collision. The army truck's turret turned to point a machine gun at him, intensifying the tension. The soldier pointed the machine gun at him, and he raised his hands in the air. The soldier then reported over the radio that the road surface alarm had been lifted. He noticed there were military forces stationed near the base, suggesting that there might be a riot in the city. He wondered about Zhang Lin's situation. The soldier advised him that it was dangerous outside and he should avoid wandering around. 
He explained that he had left home because there were no supplies and asked the soldier to brief him on the current situation in the city. The soldier reported over the radio that Area B was under attack by mutant cats and urgently needed reinforcements. He was instructed to go to the designated government supply point for needed provisions, as the city was no longer safe. He acknowledged the instructions and followed the army truck. As he drove, he noticed a helicopter flying above them. He realized that even military aircraft were being deployed, indicating the severity of the mutant creature situation. Despite his breakup with Zhang Lin, he couldn't simply stand by in this post-apocalyptic world. He decided to check on her situation on the way because they had known each other once. Upon arriving in the destroyed city, he heard a soldier reporting another looting incident on 20 Street and the discovery of a female body at pond number 20. As he looked around while driving, he noticed a destroyed police car in his truck's mirror. Apart from police cars, there seemed to be only ambulances left on that street. He witnessed ambulance personnel trying to assist an injured woman, shouting that the patient had lost too much blood and was going into shock due to another case of lung damage from food poisoning. The man yelled at his coworker to hurry up and prepare an adrenaline shot. But his co-worker expressed frustration, explaining that they had run out of cardiac stimulants due to the overwhelming number of patients. Suddenly, a glass shattered, and the woman begged her injured husband not to fall asleep. She cried, telling him they were almost at the hospital. However, the man resignedly told his wife to forget it because there were no available beds, and they couldn't even get through to the emergency hotline. Witnessing this, he realized that the healthcare system was also partially paralyzed and couldn't keep up with the effects of radiation from the plants. He clenched the steering wheel in frustration, wondering if he could successfully guide Hanhan through the challenges of the game. A moment later, at the designated emergency supplies site, a man took charge and directed the citizens, informing them that it was the government-designated emergency supply procurement location. He emphasized the need for everyone to willingly adhere to the rules, instructing them to form an orderly queue and avoid rushing. He also explained that each person had a purchase quota. Rice was priced at 160 per kilo, and vegetables were 280 per kilo. A police officer informed the crowd that each individual could buy 5 kilos of rice, 5 kilos of flour, and 1 kilo of vegetables by presenting a valid ID. However, the people waiting in line were furious with each other, and there were disputes over their positions in the line and the available food. On the side, a woman hugged her crying little girl who was desperately in need of food. The scene was chaotic, with people fighting for their place in line and for the available food, driven by their own selfishness. He knew that his ex-girlfriend's rented apartment was just around the corner to the left, so he drove there. However, a van suddenly pulled in front of him, taking him by surprise. He managed to maneuver his truck just in time. A man emerged from the van, looking around and holding something in his arm. The man knocked on his truck and inquired if he had come from the procurement site. He responded by asking the man what he wanted. The man pretended to recognize him and explained that he had seen him wandering around the market, desperately looking for food. The man then displayed a bag of vegetables and fruits, mentioning that he had watermelon, cucumber, pumpkin, tomatoes, and rice, and asked what he needed because he had it all. He examined the food and chuckled, teasing the man that if he dared to take a bite in front of him, he'd buy everything. The man retreated and inquired what he meant, expressing surprise that he didn't trust his friend. He asked if he could buy some of the vegetables from him, but he simply told the man to get out of his way. Still, the man shouted at him, asking why he spoke to him that way when he was a law-abiding citizen. He looked at the man irritably and pointed his gun at him, causing the man to panic. The man urged them to talk it out, emphasizing his compliance with the law. He sternly warned the man that if he caught him engaging in such heartless business, he wouldn't hesitate to use his gun, and no one would object. He then told the man to leave, which he did. The man stepped away, expressing his understanding, and put the food back in his van. He considered it a tough encounter and drove away as he passed. Later, he reached the destination he had in mind and exited his truck. He made his way to a partially destroyed apartment building and knocked on the door of his ex-girlfriend's apartment. However, there was no response. He reached for the spare key hidden under a rag, wondering if she wasn't at home. He used the key to open the door and called her name. To his surprise, he found the living room in disarray, which was unusual for her, as she was typically a neat person. He surveyed the room and noticed contaminated fruits and medicine boxes on the table. He picked up a box of Norflexacin antibiotics, which treated various bacterial infections. He knew the local pharmaceutical company that produced it had a terrible reputation, making him wonder why she would buy from them. Examining the surroundings, he observed that there was no blood in the house, ruling out accidental poisoning. The apartment had been ransacked, yet it didn't fit her style. There were no signs of forced entry on the door, and everything seemed too deliberate. 
he wondered where she might have gone in this chaotic world. A few days later, he was at the farmhouse when the system displayed information about the city outskirts being a poorly managed manor. The shelter was rated as guesthouse grade, and the shelter's skill reward was the Eye of Truth. This skill allowed him to see all the information about objects and creatures displayed in front of him. Additionally, at level 1 shelter privileges, he had the remote control shelter, which meant he could always monitor the real-time status of the shelter and all items in the mall, and he could command it at any time. There was an area of 30 mu available for fishing, animal husbandry, planting, and construction. However, the profit and loss status was marked as a loss, and the greenhouse was in a dilapidated state. He realized that he needed to earn enough points to upgrade the farm items, and it shouldn't affect the development of the anti-radiation grade. He was busy digging the ground with a grape hoe when Hanhan excitedly called him over to show that the seeds had sprouted. He asked her to come and take a look, and she was amazed to see a tomato seedling. The time to maturity was 48 hours or 2 days, which made him happy because it meant the anti-radiation seeds worked as described by the system. The short maturity period was a good sign, and he believed that with more points, he and Hanhan could survive in the post-apocalyptic world. Hanhan mentioned that she had thought all the planted seeds had withered and she was worried they wouldn't have any food. She thanked him for obtaining the seeds and he assured her that her big brother always found a way. He asked her if she remembered the rules he had explained to her. She laughed and assured him not to underestimate her. She recalled the rules, not to eat food from anyone except him, not to leave the farm without his permission, and if she encountered any strange animals, she should hide. She forgot the next part, and he reminded her to keep an eye on Zio High and not let it eat anything it wanted. She affirmed that she understood, and Zio Hai barked in agreement. Two days later, the system indicated that the anti-radiation crops were ripe, and he should collect them as soon as possible. He noticed that the harvest was good and picked one of the tomatoes. The system informed him that radiation-resistant tomatoes were nutritious and long-term consumption could effectively increase the body's condition. They also had a storage time of 30 days. He wondered if the tomatoes could improve his physique, so he took a bite. The tomato was sweet, and he felt a warm sensation throughout his body. The fatigue from the past few days of work vanished. In this food-scarce post-apocalyptic world, he not only had access to food but also received attribute bonuses as the crops upgraded. It seemed he was on his way to becoming a full-fledged farm owner in the system. In the system, unlocking permissions, making mall purchases, and upgrading shelters all depend on points, and different functions require varying amounts of points to unlock. The primary source of points is the exchange system, primarily used for recycling crops, livestock meat, and minerals. These items are divided into different price categories based on different grades, starting from the lowest anti-radiation grade crops, then ancient medical grade crops, followed by god-tier powerful crops, and the highest supreme god-tier enhanced crops. In level 1, anti-radiation grade crops are valued at 1 point per kilogram, level 2 ancient medical grade crops are 100 points per kilogram, level 3 god-tier powerful crops crops are 1,000 points per kilogram, and level 4 Supreme God tier enhanced crops are 100,000 points per kilogram. The system provides a one-stop service, from supply and sales to recycling, and as long as they have enough points, they can rapidly turn the farm into a top-tier military base, which he was looking forward to. He was pleased with the tomatoes he had grown, which were just anti-radiation grade crops. Three more grades of crops were yet to come, promising even more impressive additional effects. He looked around at the harvest of ancient medical grade crops and noticed that a few were ripe. However, he expected the 10% maturity rate of the ancient medical grade crops. The system showed him that these were ancient medicinal grade carrots with a 100% growth rate. The effect of these carrots was to clear all negative effects such as poison, illness, and irreversible damage caused by negative effects. Furthermore, their storage time was unlimited, which left him amazed and relieved, as they no longer needed to worry about medical treatment. Later, he finished arranging some of the harvested crops and planned to sell 70% of the food for points, keeping the rest as reserves in his backpack. The system asked him to confirm recycling 200 kilograms of radiation-resistant crops, and he did. The system indicated that recycling was successful, rewarding him with 2,000 points. In addition, three medicinal-grade crops were stored in the warehouse, along with 30 kilograms of anti-radiation-grade crops. The system congratulated him for completing his first recycling and achieving the Master of Recycling achievement, rewarding him with a smart working robot, an agricultural type. He was surprised to receive a reward for his first recycling and thought the achievement system could offer some valuable items. He picked up the small robot and initially underestimated its usefulness. However, he noticed that it appeared to be staring at him, which made him wonder if it somehow sensed his thoughts. The robot then leaped from his hand and started to perform some tasks at an impressive speed. 
he began to consider the idea that his consciousness might be connected to the system, and the robot he obtained through the system could directly receive commands from his brain. He changed his mind, thinking that the robot was quite capable. This development led him to consider the possibilities of acquiring a combat robot in the future to enhance Hanan's safety, which he found to be a convenient prospect. Later, he called Hanan because it was time to eat and told her to stop watching cartoons. Then he told her that today they had big chicken legs, making her excitedly look around together with Sayo Hai. He told her that it was for celebrating the successful germination of the seeds, and she asked him if he didn't say they should be more careful with food from now on. He replied that they can start planting again, and they can eat some of the stored food from earlier, making her feel touched. He told her that she can eat freely at home, but if anyone outside finds out there is food at home, she'll be forbidden from eating for three days, making her surprised and shout that one day without food is already cruel enough. Then she happily told him that she won't tell anyone, to which he agreed and told her that they should eat because she must be craving something else after two days of instant noodles. Then he gave Zio Hai the first big chicken leg and thanked it for protecting Hanhan and him. Hanhan hugged Zio Hai and told him that it was the best, but then she felt sad and told him that she wondered if Sayo Bai was feeling better now. He was silent for a moment, then told her not to worry about Sayo Bai because it was just too injured right now and couldn't come to see her temporarily. But once Sayo Bai healed, he'd let it come out to play with him, to which she agreed. Then she told Hanan to absolutely not go to the attic to disturb Sayo Bai's rest, to which she agreed. While behind the farm, Sayo Bai was aggressively growling. He was surprised when the system warned him that someone was trying to invade. He ordered the system to access the monitoring screen, and the system began to scan the invader's appearance. Then it showed him that the invader was male, 42 years old, unharmed, and the threat level is 3. He figured out who it was and wondered how his uncle Nan ended up there. He walks outside and asks the man named Nan if there is something wrong. Nan throws his cigar away while calling him young boss Lai and tells him that he has something to ask for help. He told him to speak, and Nan asked if he had any extra food on his farm because he really had no other choice. His house was robbed, so all the food he had stocked was gone, and the food sold in the market was too expensive. So, he shyly asks if he can lend him some food. He pitifully looks at Nan for a second and apologizes because he doesn't have much stock there either. The previous crops grown before were also destroyed in the mutation. Nan told him that it was alright, and he had also been to many relatives, and none of them had any extra food to lend him. Also, he was being shameless. He sighed and told Nan that he could give him some food, but not too much, and it was thanks for taking care of his family, making Nan light up and thanking him continuously. Then he gave Nan a bag of instant noodles and explained that it was the only one he could spare, so he should rest for a while and think of other ways. Nan agreed and thanked him again. He told Nan that he wished him good luck, but Nan told him that he wished good luck to them and walked away. He knew that the food he shared with Nan could only last his family three to five days. Although he was not short of food now, it was hard to predict how people would behave in the future, so he'd have to learn to hide his secrets. Also, he doesn't need all the regular vegetables stored in the freezer, so he planned to give them away quietly at night. Later, they were in his truck when Hanhan told him that she wanted to watch Little Magic Fairy at home. He told her that the farm hadn't been cleared of mutated animals yet, so he didn't feel comfortable leaving her alone at home. She asked him where they were going, and he replied that they were going to her grandfather Nan, who used to come to their house to help, to bring him some food. She told him that she remembered that very enthusiastic grandfather, and there was also that older brother who gave her candy all the time. He reminded her that he told her that she could only eat one candy at most a day, making her panicky, telling him that no one sneaked her candy, and she remembered it wrong. A moment later, they arrived at Nan's neighborhood, and he noticed that it was too quiet, not even a dog could be heard barking. He stopped his truck, thinking that they must have been afraid of their domestic animals mutating, so they got rid of them. He came out of the truck, and Hanhan also gave him her snack while he was busy tidying the food. Then, Nan shouted in panic, and Nan asked his son Zio Tian what he had done yesterday, but Zio Tian just coughed continuously, making him shocked. Then they saw Zio Tian coughing out blood, making Nan cry for his son in worry, asking him if he wasn't better just now and why he was getting worse again. But Zio Tian just vomited blood, making him wonder what happened to him. Hanhan worriedly asked him if her grandfather Nan's son was going to die because he vomited a lot of blood, and he whispered to her that it was okay, so she should stop looking. He knows that those symptoms are similar to accidentally eating a radioactive vegetable, making him wonder if the dry foods he gave to Nan ran out so quickly. 
but then he remembers the medicinal grade carrot and thinks that it was the perfect test subject, and whether Xiao Tian survives or not is up to him. On the other hand, Nan worriedly lays his son down and shouts that those damn doctors in the hospital said there are no beds left. They also said that even if there were beds, it would not be possible to cure him. Xiao Tian grabs his neck in pain and cries, making Nan cryingly ask him what he should do. But Xiao Tian's eyes roll up while coughing continuously. Suddenly, something is thrown on their window and it lands on the bed. Nan furiously asks who the hell threw it and tells them to get out of there, but Xiao Tian manages to tell his father to wait a minute and points to the thing that landed on the bed. Nan tells his son not to move because he will take a look at it. When Nan opens it, he is shocked and excitedly shouts that it is vegetables, fresh vegetables. Then Nan notices a paper ball on the vegetables, and when he opens it, he sees a carrot inside with words written on the paper. Nan reads the letter, saying if he doesn't want Xiao Tian to die, she should feed him that carrot. Nan angrily asks if that person is crazy and shouts that the big hospitals can't treat Xiao Tian, but that person is making fun of him with a carrot. Then Nan cries, asking what is the use of having fresh vegetables now, and tells his poor son that his father is useless. Xiao Tian's vision slowly fades, but he still manages to call his father and hold his father's hand while telling him that he wants to try it because he'd still die even if he lay there like it, but he wants to live. Nan is stunned for a moment and painfully agrees to his son's request. He then tells his son that the hospital couldn't cure him anyway, but he can't just watch him die in front of him. Then he puts the carrot in Xiao Tian's mouth and tells his son to chew on it quickly. Xiao Tian chews the carrot in his mouth, but suddenly, Xiao Tian screams and twitches in pain, making Nan panic and worriedly call his son. Then Xiao Tian vomits blood on the side of his bed and continues to vomit until his pale skin begins to color again. Nan notices it and happily cries while telling Xiao Tian that it is great. He smiles, hearing that Xiao Tian is getting better. Then the lamp outside slowly lights up until it completely has light. He notices that the power is back on, and the signal should be good, so he calls his girlfriend Zhang Lin. But the phone just continues ringing until the phone tells him that the number he dialed is currently unavailable, so he should try again later. Meanwhile, in the car, Lin's phone rang in her pocket, and the driver passenger was annoyed about it, asking whose phone was ringing. The man gets the phone and realizes that the signal is back, but the driver tells the man that it belongs to the woman in the back, so he better turn off her phone. The man asks the driver how much food they get after it was delivered, and the man replies that they wouldn't have to worry about food and drink for at least a few months, making the man laugh and tell the driver that working with his fat brother is really exciting. The man asks the driver what he thinks they want those people for, but the driver replies he doesn't care, and all they do is take the money and shut up. Meanwhile, on the road, Hanan tells him that her big brother is very strong because she saw how much blood Xiao Tian vomited. But just by eating a carrot, Xiao Tian became fine. Then, Xiao Tian's body quickly changed from gray to blue, which was cool. Hanan continued to talk to him with her vivid imagination, making him think that Hanan loves animation a lot, and even her descriptions were graphic. But then, something jumped on his truck roof, causing him to momentarily lose control and wonder what happened. Suddenly, a monster's hand appeared in front of them, and a monster with red eyes glared at them. A mutated monkey growled at them, making him panic. He told Hanan to hold on tight and then moved his truck to the side to make the monkey fall, but it held onto the truck tightly and tried to attack him from inside. He pulled out his gun, shouting for it to get down, and fired his gun where it was holding. But it jumped in front of his truck. He started his truck in anger and moved it forward, but the monkey still clung to his truck. He protected Hanhan with his other arm and slammed his truck into the nearby tree to hit the monkey in front. Then he pointed his gun at it and shot it in the head, making its head explode. He stepped out of his truck and checked the dead monkey lying in front of it. He threw it away, but then he noticed a serial number on its arm, making him wonder where it came from, knowing that there were neither breeding farms nor zoos nearby. Then he remembered Tianren Pharmaceuticals' drug brand, realizing it was the only thing nearby. On the other hand, in a large building, there were many animals flying around it. Meanwhile, in Tianran's house, he told Hanhan to watch some animation because he had something to deal with, to which she agreed. Then he walked towards their farmhouse basement and sat down in front of Xiao Bai's cage. Xiao Bai growled at him in anger, but he just sighed while wearing his gloves. Then the system asked him if he wanted to take out the medicinal carrot, and he replied yes. He forcefully put the carrot into Xiao Bai's mouth, thinking that since the medicine could remove toxins from irradiated vegetables, Xiao Bai could definitely return to his old self. After he put all the carrot in Xiao Bai's mouth, he let go and hoped the carrot would work. Xiao Bai furiously glared and growled at him, but then Xiao Bai screamed loudly. On the other hand, Hanan heard a loud thunder sound, 
causing her to shake in fear. She stood up, thinking it was a big thunderbolt, and felt a little scared, wondering why her big brother wasn't there yet. Then she decided to find her big brother. A moment later, she found her brother in the basement and planned to sneak up on him. She walked closer to him in silence and surprised him from behind, making him jump a little in shock. He worriedly looked at her, but she just laughingly asked him if he was scared. When she was about to tell him something, he saw something on the ground. She was stunned in horror to see Zio by on the ground, covered in blood. She lost her balance, making him worried, and told her to pull herself together. She tearfully asked him why it happened and whether they had carrots that could save lives. Then she told him to feed it to Zio by quickly. He explained to her that carrots can't save living beings that have been mutated, and Zio by was. But before he could finish his sentence, she told him that she didn't want it, and she didn't want Zio by to die in vain. She screamed Zio Bai's name in pain and cried loudly. A moment later, they burned Zio Bai's body and buried it near the tree. Han Hin was silent the whole time. He grabbed her hand and told her that it was getting colder there, so they should go back. He called Han Hin to come for dinner and told her that it was all her favorite food. But she just watched anime without looking at him. He sighed and told Zio Hai to stay with Han Hin in the house, to which it barked in agreement. Outside, the system showed him that radiation-resistant grade crops had matured, and he should harvest them in time. He clicked on the system, and it showed him that the crops were harvested. The radiation-resistant grade crops weighed 500 kilograms, and the ancient medicinal grade crops weighed 10 kilograms. His mini-robot jumped on his shoulder while he was busy looking at the system, and it showed him that the points were redeemed successfully. He upgraded his level 1 dilapidated greenhouse to a level 2 ordinary greenhouse. But then the system warned him that his defense shelter was only rated at level 3 and could only protect against the intrusion of small wild animals, which was an extremely high risk, and it was recommended to establish a defense system as soon as possible. He agreed with the system and thought that his top priority should be to improve the safety of the farm first. With the current crop level, point growth was very high, so the expansion of production could be delayed. He upgraded their wall reinforcement from level 1 to level 2, purchased a perimeter power grid, and obtained a radar parade level times 1. He realized that there were not many points left, but he still needed to get some mechanical guards for Hanhan. Then he noticed something in the item shop, but it cost 3,500 points, which made him frustrated because he didn't have enough points for it. He knew that the points would almost be enough if he sold the grain stored in the warehouse. If he ran out of points, he could earn them again. So, he decided to get those two robots first and began to purchase them. The system showed that his purchase was successful, and he got one level 1 hummingbird, a green building head panchi with a load of 100 over 100, damage of 0 over 100, speed of 5, damage of 3, defense of 1, and its attack method is shooting. The other one is one level 2 hound, a level 2 combat warrior with a load of 50 over 50, fuel capacity of 100 over 100, speed of 4, damage of 6, defense of 5, and its attack methods are burn, shoot, and bite. He mentally commanded his hummingbird warrior to crush the fallen leaves, and it fired bullets that shattered the leaves, impressing him with its precision. He was glad to have an air patrol sniper at his disposal and decided to test its ground combat strength. He ordered the Hound Warrior to blow a huge stone. It gathered its power in its mouth and blew it towards the stone, breaking it into pieces, making him feel much more relieved. A moment later, he went inside and called Hanhan, who was still watching television. A nose appeared next to her, and she looked back to see a robot dog. He told her that from now on, she should let it follow her around and protect her, and she should give it a name. He offered her the name Zio Bai, to which she sadly agreed. Meanwhile, in Tanran Pharmaceutical Building, a man reported that the out-of-control samples had been cleaned up, and only number 7's data were steadily rising. Also, it could now easily punch through 5mm thick steel plates. The man in the suit asked about the situation on the other side, and the man replied that their vice president Ren was already very dissatisfied with their failure to donate medical equipment. If she found out, it would be bad, and reporting it to the head office would be even worse. But the man in the suit grabbed his seat, and the general manager of Tianren Pharmaceutical, Liang Tianyu, sat down smiling. Tianyu told the man that it was just a girl with a minor background, and besides, it was done secretly. If she wanted to investigate, she'd have to know where to start. The man agreed with Tianyu but reminded him that the head office was watching. Tianyu ordered the man to instruct Chen Nan to keep an eye on Ren Zio and not let her disrupt his business, to which the man agreed. After the man left, Tianyu turned around in his chair and smiled, thinking that maybe there would be a great treasure. A moment later, a lady asked the receptionist where Liang Tianyu was, and the receptionist apologized to her while calling her vice president Ren. She told Ren that Tianyu was not in the company at the moment and that she was making things very difficult for them. However, Ren just slammed Tianyu's office door open and shouted at him, asking what was going on in his head. 
she told him that now that the entire southern region's medical system was paralyzed as a medical company, he should lead his staff to actively cooperate with the hospital and donate equipment and medicines instead of being busy with animal experiments. He responded that it was the manager's office and it was not appropriate for her to barge in like that. He also argued that as a businessman, his purpose was to profit from everything, and he didn't think that today's medical treatment could do anything about that worldwide disease. She was confused to hear it, but he told her that she was also a shareholder of the company and enjoyed her right to dividends. Then he asked her if she could imagine how rewarding it would be if they could develop a solution. She lit up and asked Tian Yu if his research had made progress, mentioning that even the Yanwang federal government had not developed any effective drugs yet. She expressed her intention to visit his lab, and her pendant necklace made a sound. However, he told her he was just kidding and asked how they could develop a solution so quickly. He suggested that with more cooperation and manpower investment, progress would be faster. She told him she would go to the lab later to check on the progress, but she wanted to see it first before fully cooperating with the project. He welcomed her and arranged for a personal escort. She agreed to go, and he said he would see her out. Later, a man whispered to her that the technical team said her time in the office was too short, and they could only do a rough scan. He also mentioned that the entrance to the secret laboratory was likely not in the office. She became upset and called Tianyu an old fox. She then asked if they got a statement from the captured scientist, and the man replied no, as they were blindfolded every time they went in and out. However, they did obtain the key card, earning the man's praise. He gave her the key card, making her wonder where else it could be other than those places. She thought that the most dangerous place might be the safest and believed she knew where it was. Later, the director introduced himself as Tu Zai, in charge of accompanying and explaining everything to her. He would also show her around. She suggested they check on the progress of the experimental subjects first, to which Tu agreed and showed her the way. They arrived at the captured animal, and Tu explained that it was number 7, the only subject in the experimental batch that didn't go berserk, with its power increasing tenfold. While it wouldn't be as mindlessly bloodthirsty as a failure, it was still unstable with some aggressiveness. However, during their conversation, a man called the director in a panicked manner, and he whispered something to Tu, surprising him. While the two of them were busy whispering, she observed them with a smile. Tu apologized to her because of an emergency and said he couldn't continue to accompany her. He suggested that a colleague behind him could accompany her instead. She told Tu that it was alright since it was just a routine check, and she would walk around for a while and then leave. Tu was worried that it might go against the rules, but she reassured him that they were all under surveillance coverage and asked him what he was worried about. She encouraged Tu to go quickly and not to delay because it seemed important. Tu agreed and told her they would be watching out for her safety at all times. Then they both left. She clicked the device on her ear and told the man that it was time to take action, and the man agreed. The man clicked his computer to disable surveillance and told her that it was covered. She ordered the man to scan the place for their hideout, and the man instructed her to check the northeast corner, where there should be a hollow in the wall or something that could be pressed down. He also told her that she had 30 minutes. She pressed down the wall and opened a hideout, and she was shocked to see many humans in capsules. The man asked her how it was, and she replied that it was worse than predicted. He asked if he needed to contact the head office for intervention but she told him to wait a minute. Then she looked up and saw a lady in a tube with a fishtail. Beneath the tube, she read that the lady's name was Zhang Ling and a description, which made her furious at Tian Yu. Meanwhile, on Tian Ran's farm, the system showed him that his radiation-resistant grade corn was ready to be picked. Han Han was looking at them in amazement, and he told her to come and help him finish work early for dinner. She picked a corn and excitedly said she wanted to eat it grilled later. He asked if she was hungry already, and she replied that she was too hungry to pick the corn. He told her to gather some dry wood, and he'd make her some grilled corn with butter, which made her jump with excitement. A moment later, they were grilling corn when Han Han asked what would happen if she kept eating like this and turned into a fat pig. He knew that Hanan's appetite had increased recently and told her that the special crop could enhance their physical fitness. As their physique grows, their nutrient requirements would become higher, and since they were still growing, eating more food wouldn't make them gain weight. It would help them grow taller. The system showed him that Hanan's strength was 10, intelligence was 11, speed was 11, and endurance was 11 over 11. He thought that after eating radiation-resistant vegetables for a few days, both his and Hanan's physical data had increased a lot. He wondered if Han Han kept eating like this, she wouldn't turn into King Kong Barbie, and he worried about his lovely little sister. However, he was confused about what he was overthinking. She exclaimed that the grilled corn was so good, and he told her that he would make her a spicy one. He thought that with their shelter, even if Han Han's appetite became comparable to Luffy's in the future, he could still afford it. 
but then the system showed him that a visitor was coming, making him wonder who was visiting him at such a time. He saw Xiao Tian in front of their gate, holding the food he gave him, and he wondered what Xiao Tian was doing. He walked toward the gate and asked Xiao Tian why he was there. Xiao Tian handed him the bag of food and explained that he had given some instant noodles to his family the other day, and his father said they should return the favor. Additionally, his family had just received some food, so he brought it to him. He replied, all right, knowing it was what he had given to their family, and he didn't think he had helped the wrong person. He asked Xiao Tian where he had obtained all that food, and Xiao Tian replied that he found it in their yard. It might have been sent quietly by a relative or some kind of person who snuck it in. Then Xiao Tian shyly mentioned that he just wanted to repay the favor and had something else to ask him if it was okay. He encouraged him to speak, and Xiao Tian explained that he had heard about a new grain shopping center opened on the outskirts of the southern side, with plenty of stock available. He wanted to borrow his truck to go buy some. He agreed and told Xiao Tian that he could borrow it. However, Xiao Tian informed him that he didn't have his driver's license and the shopping center was in a remote location. He asked if he could drive him there. Panicky, Xiao Tian assured him it wasn't too far away. He realized that Xiao Tian was not only borrowing the truck but also the driver. Xiao Tian also assured him that it wouldn't take too long and begged for his help. He had been stuck on the farm recently and had initially planned to visit the shopping center in a couple of days to inquire about the situation. However, since it was earlier than expected, he decided to drive Xiao Tian there along with him. With the mechanical guards at home, he felt relieved, even if Han Han was alone. Because, after all, with Xiao Bai's combat power, it would be able to take care of even a small group. He agreed to Xiao Tian's request and told him that they were old acquaintances. However, he emphasized the need to return before noon to cook for Han Han, to which Xiao Tian agreed and apologized for the trouble. He instructed Xiao Tian to wait for him as he would get the truck ready, and Xiao Tian agreed. A moment later, he told Han Han to stay at home and not open the door if anyone calls. He assured her he'd be back soon. She told him not to worry because Da Bai, which means big in Chinese, is awesome. She was referring to Xiao Bai, the robot dog. He asked her how it became Da Bai, and she explained it was because it's an upgraded version, and she had tested it, watching it blow up big rocks with a bam bam. He told her that she could only use Da Bai in case of emergencies in the future, as it could be very dangerous otherwise. She agreed and told him that she wouldn't blow up rocks anymore, which made him silent for a moment. He patted her head and assured her that he and her brother Xiao Tian would go to the shopping center and come back with candy for her. She asked if Xiao Tian was there because she wanted to say hello, but he asked her why she wanted to do that and reminded her that she couldn't reveal Da Bai in front of outsiders. He pinched her cheek, and she assured him she understood because she was already six years old and not a child anymore. She added that except for her big brother, no one talks to her at home, which makes her feel suffocated. Then they drove out of the farm with the truck window down, and Han Han excitedly looked at Xiao Tian. When she was about to say something to him, Tian Ran put his hand on her head and pulled her hair while telling her to get out of the car and let Xiao Tian in so they could leave early and he could be back in time to cook for her. They drove away, leaving Han Han furiously calling him a stinky big brother and shouting that she hadn't even finished saying hello. But then she walked back, thinking to forget it and watch cartoons. On the other hand, Tian Ran and Xiao Tian were busy driving away. He thought Han Han was a bit impulsive, but he knew she had a big mouth. The road was silent for a moment, and then Xiao Tian asked if it was okay for Han Han to be at home alone because the world was very chaotic now, and he was afraid that if some bad guys targeted the farm, Han Han would be in danger. Tian Ran asked Xiao Bai, who's gonna look at my little shabby farm with no money or food? Xiao Tian asked if he hadn't left some self-defense tools for Han Han, and he explained that Han Han was only six years old. Even if she had a self-defense weapon, she wouldn't know how to use it. He was confident that there was no safer place than their farm at the moment. He assured Xiao Tian that he had electrified the farm gate, so no one could break in, and he shouldn't worry. Xiao Tian replied that it was a relief, and then he grabbed his phone from his pocket and texted someone. Tian Ran peeked to see what he was doing, and Xiao Tian noticed him. Xiao Tian put his phone back in his pocket and explained that he was afraid he didn't have enough money, so he'd borrow some from his friends. Tian Ran remained silent. Meanwhile, on their farm, Han Han was excitedly shouting Rainbow Warrior Attack and Lemon Yellow Super Evolution Golden Yellow with Xiao Hai. She shouted that her brother Xiao Tian could also change his color and grabbed Xiao Hai's face, wondering if he could be a member of the Rainbow Warriors like her brother. This made Xiao Hai confused. She shouted that last time she and her big brother saw Xiao Tian as green, and this time he was red, which she thought was a lot of fun. Meanwhile, on the road, he handed Xiao Tian some money and told him to take it. Xiao Tian seemed confused, and he explained that he didn't have much money either, so Xiao Tian could take it for now. Xiao Tian panically replied no and said he had already received a lot of help from him, so he didn't know if he could accept more money. 
However, he insisted, slamming the money into Xiao Tian's hand and telling him to keep it. He also advised Xiao Tian to stop talking nonsense because they still had to drive. Xiao Tian expressed his gratitude and promised to repay his kindness. The navigator showed them that they should go straight ahead for 500 meters, then turn right in 300 meters, and at 200 meters, they should reach a fork in the road. Finally, 100 meters ahead, they needed to turn right. However, Xiao Tian suddenly grabbed the wheel and suggested going to the left instead, as he thought the road on the right appeared to be closed. He gave him a strange look and forcefully stopped the truck. He was frustrated and slammed his hand on the sofa, insisting that the road on the right couldn't be closed without a major natural disaster since it was a main road in the township that he often traveled on. He asked Xiao Tian where he had heard the news. Xiao Tian explained that a friend had told him, but he demanded to know which friend he was referring to and urged him to call that friend so he could hear it directly. Xiao Tian, grabbing his coat, begged him to trust him just this once and assured him that he wouldn't harm him. He requested that they turn left before it was too late. He was irritated by Xiao Tian's behavior but decided to turn the truck and head in the direction Xiao Tian suggested. On the other hand, someone became upset when they noticed the truck had switched lanes. The man shouted that something had happened, and the driver angrily exclaimed how dare that little rascal go back on his word. The passenger in the car called the man Nan and asked what they should do. Nan activated the device on his ear, stating that he was prepared and told his other men that the target was heading toward them. He reminded them that Liang had instructed them to stay alive. The man acknowledged his orders and confirmed he understood. Nan instructed the driver to turn around and block their path while the second team attacked from the rear. He wanted to see if they could escape today. On the other hand, Tian Ran was driving fast, his anger mounting, and he angrily asked Xiao Tian what was happening, insisting that he should tell him. Xiao Tian continuously apologized, feeling guilty for selling him out, and admitted that it was all his fault. He explained that he had no choice because they had taken his father captive. Tian Ran told Xiao Tian to calm down first and asked who they were and what they wanted from him. Xiao Tian replied that these people were from Tianren Pharmaceuticals, and they knew he had the medicine for poisoning. They used him to lure him away from the farm, and while they were gone, they captured Han Hin to force him to submit. Tian Ran was stunned and furious, telling Xiao Tian that Han Hin was only six years old, and he couldn't believe they had kidnapped a child. Xiao Tian explained that he didn't know, and they had threatened him with his father's life, leaving him with no choice. However, he noticed something behind them and was surprised to see a car waiting. He sped up, and a panicked Xiao Tian shouted that they had already caught up with them. Tian Ran told Xiao Tian to be quiet, then angrily questioned if all the information he had provided was just a test to determine whether the farm was protected, and whether he was in contact with those people. Even when he was playing on his phone earlier, he was communicating with them. Xiao Tian apologized and implored Tian Ran to hand over the medicine because there were too many of them, and they wouldn't be able to escape. Tian Ran expressed his deep disappointment in Xiao Tian, insisting that he didn't want to kill him, but he couldn't believe what he had done to Han Han. Xiao Tian tearfully apologized and said he regretted his actions, but with his father in danger, there was no turning back. He emphasized that they were about to be caught, so he should give them the medicine. Tian Ran gripped the steering wheel of his truck in frustration and told Xiao Tian that he would settle the score with him later. However, unfortunately, neither of them had a chance of leaving his farm alive. Before this, Xiao Tian remembers his father excitedly telling him that he is finally feeling better, but he frightened his father to death. He told his father that he couldn't believe he had actually survived, and his father asked him what he had eaten that made him feel better. He replied that he was so hungry he couldn't stand it anymore, and then he found an apple in the cellar that didn't seem to be contaminated. His father told him that he was really that desperate, but asked him how he dared to eat anything from the cellar when he knew they all touched the ground. He told his father that they had been eating nothing but thin porridge for several days, so he wanted to take a chance. Otherwise, he would starve to death sooner or later. However, his father just scolded him and told him to stop talking nonsense because he had borrowed some food, and they had also received a shipment of food. Furthermore, there was a magical potion that saved his life, and it must be a gift from the gods because they couldn't bear to see him suffer so much. There were many people who had died from accidentally eating poisonous vegetables, but he was the only one who survived. So, they must visit their ancestors' graves later to thank them for their blessings. But he thought that if there really was a god, he shouldn't allow such disasters to happen in the world. And the potion was given to them by someone who didn't want their identity revealed. His father asked if he was still hungry, but he just couldn't believe how much food that man could actually provide them, while their family was left to starve without even the basic necessities of survival. So, he felt that life was unfair. Then, he stood up with a thought in his mind and rushed out of their house. His father asked where he was going, and he replied that he'd be back soon. His father tried to tell him that he hadn't fully recovered yet and should rest at home. But he told his father to leave him alone. 
A moment later, he arrived at a house and the man inside shouted that he was coming, so he should stop knocking and ask who was disturbing him. He called the man Mayo, and Mayo was shocked to see him and asked him what he wanted. He looked down and saw himself covered in blood, so he explained to Mayo that their home was robbed, and he just wanted to check the surveillance video of their house. Mayo asked him what he was talking about and pointed to the device on the roof. He explained that it was the one, and he remembered its 360-degree wireless monitoring. Mayo agreed, and he asked Mayo to lend it to him to see how badly he was beaten by the thief. Mayo told him to hurry up because it was his bedtime. He started to review the footage, knowing that the camera had a perfect view of his alleyway while Mayo was sleeping beside him. He looked at the screen, wondering who it was, and he was surprised to see the license plate on the truck near his house. Afterward, he returned home, and his father asked him what he had been up to. He told his father that he figured out who saved his life. His father inquired, asking him who it was. He replied that it was their young boss, Lai. He had checked the CCTV and found that the times when the truck arrived and departed matched the time of his rescue. His father exclaimed that their young boss Lai was indeed a kind person, providing them with food and saving their lives. But he hesitated for a moment and then asked his father if he had heard the news that Tianren Group was offering a generous reward to those who find a cure. His father called him a troublemaker and asked him what he was trying to accomplish. He explained that he was simply trying to make life a bit easier for both of them in this harsh world. He asked his father how long the little food they had left would last and what they would do when it ran out. This surprised his father, but he continued by questioning whether his father expected their boss, Young Lai, to keep providing them with food. In response, his father slapped him hard, accusing him of wanting to repay Tianren's kindness with ingratitude. He threatened to break his legs if he dared to leave. However, he asked his father if he didn't understand their current situation and told him that if they wanted to survive, they could only rely on themselves, and he was just doing what he had to do to stay alive. Back on the road, Tian Ran was frustrated because the enemy was closely following him, and he couldn't shake them off. Two more cars blocked his path, so he forcefully stopped his truck to avoid hitting the cars in front of him. Men emerged from their cars, and the other car behind him blocked his way out. He got out of the car holding Xiao Tian. The man teasingly asked if he was Lai Tian Ran and introduced himself as Chen Nan, affiliated with Tian Ran Pharmaceutical Company. He explained that they used this special method to meet him but had no hidden agenda. They knew he had the cure for the poisoning pandemic and wanted to discuss cooperation. They proposed that if he provided the cure, they would join forces and make money together, which would result in substantial profits. He asked Chen Nan what would happen if he refused, and Chen Nan replied that there were only two options now. The first was that he voluntarily cooperated with them, leading to a happy outcome where they could all make money with a smile on their faces. He inquired about the second option, and Chen Nan stated that they could obtain the cure for themselves and could always make him talk. He explained to Chen Nan that he had obtained the cure for the poisoning epidemic purely by chance, and there was only one dose. He had already used it on Xiao Tian, and he apologized to Chen Nan for them having made the journey for nothing. He noticed that the people with Chen Nan didn't have guns, and Xiao Tian was already useless to them. If they had guns, they could have simply injured him without the need for further discussion. Chen Nan took out his phone and told him that it seemed he wouldn't be moved even if he saw his own demise. Chen Nan then called his men, asking if they were at the farm gate, and ordered them to enter and apprehend the little girl, then feed her the poisonous fruits. Chen Nan playfully asked him what the point was of electrifying his broken fence when their men were experts in insulation protection. He advised him that if he intended to go against Tianren Company, he needed to understand his own value and cooperate willingly to make money together. However, Chen Nan was taken aback when he emitted a powerful light and seriously conveyed his hatred for threats, making Chen Nan wonder how such a humble farmer could possess such terrifying eyes. He cautioned them that they should be thankful they hadn't invaded the farm because with him around, they could extend their lives, at least for a little while. Chen Nan told him to stop talking and to cooperate so the little girl would survive. Chen Nan believed that there were many of them, so they shouldn't fear him but he simply stared at them. This led Chen Nan to conclude that he wouldn't cooperate. Chen Nan then ordered his men to sever his limbs and leave him alive. Meanwhile, on the farm, the men in suits were outside the property, using an excavator to destroy the wall. This noise made Han Han really mad, and she shouted that it was so loud she couldn't enjoy her cartoon in peace. She wished she could blow the heads off those bad guys. Meanwhile, on the road, Tian Ran was engaged in a battle with the men, and one by one, the men were being thrown back towards Chen Nan. Chen Nan looked back in surprise and noticed that the man had a flat stomach, leaving him wondering what was going on. He recalled that anti-personnel weapons were supposed to be found only on the farm, so his plan was to lure that guy out of his farm. 
Meanwhile, a man near the farm was looking through binoculars and noticed something was amiss at the farm. Rocks were being blown apart, and while it was a considerable distance, his best guess was that it involved explosive weaponry. Back on the road, Tian Ran attacked the men surrounding him. Chen Nan couldn't believe how powerful the farmer was. Tian Ran hadn't expected that the physical enhancements from the radiation-resistant crops would be so formidable. In just a few days of consuming those anti-radiation crops, his physical attributes had improved significantly. It wasn't just his strength and speed, even his bone density and reflexes had seen remarkable progress. He knew that in ancient times, there was a way to achieve mastery through the use of a sword, so Tian Ran was seemingly achieving mastery through his fists. Tian Ran decided to create some distance, believing he had tested his physical capabilities enough. He then pulled a gun from his jacket and aimed it at the men, taking them by surprise. Chen Nan realized he had been careless, assuming he wouldn't need firearms. He was surprised to see that Tian Ran had a gun too. Chen Nan warned him that he shouldn't mess with the influential figure backing him and should consider the consequences if he laid a hand on him. He believed that as long as he could get close to Tian Ran, the gun would be nothing more than a piece of scrap metal. He told Chen Nan that he was right and proceeded to shoot the men, informing Chen Nan that he was still somewhat useful. However, there was no need to spare the others. Chen Nan fell to the ground, bullets whizzing by, and he was hit near the ears, causing him to shout in pain while the other men were shot and killed. Chen Nan quickly fled, thinking he should hide in the woods and wait until Tian Ran ran out of bullets. Tian Ran tried to follow Chen Nan while firing at him. But Chen Nan managed to find cover behind a nearby rock. Chen Nan believed that Tian Ran had stopped and thought that Tian Ran must have run out of bullets, which he considered a good thing. He planned to hide for a while and then surprise attack Tian Ran, thinking he still had a chance of winning. Unbeknownst to Chen Nan, Tian Ran was actually above him, examining the system with a smile. He opened his inventory to retrieve his pistol from the warehouse and reloaded it. Chen Nan heard the sound of the reload and looked back, asking why he still had a bullet. He questioned if Tian Ran was a martial artist, but Tian Ran simply shot Chen Nan. Meanwhile, on the farm, the robot bird shot the men outside. The system informed Han Han that, following her instructions, the last intruder's head had been blown off and asked for her next instruction. Han Han worried that her big brother would be upset if he found out what she had done and might not like her anymore. She shook her head, determined to get rid of the evidence outside the door before her big brother returned. Meanwhile, on the road, Chan Nan was bleeding and injured. He admitted to Tian Ran that he had made a mistake by using the child to threaten him and begged him to stop tormenting him. He assured Tian Ran that he had revealed everything. Tian Ran offered him two choices, a quick and painless death or a glimmer of hope. He could cure him and continue. Since he had plenty of bullets and time, it was up to Chan Nan to decide. Chan Nan asked him to ask his questions, and Tian Ran inquired about the identity of the person behind him. Chan Nan replied that it was Liang Tianyu, the CEO of Tianrun. Tian Ran wiped the blood from his face, realizing that it was the person who had inflated drug prices, which explained Tian Yu's ruthlessness. He then asked if there were others involved besides Liang Tian Yu, and Chan Nan said that Tian Yu was solely responsible for the matter and had kept it well hidden. Even high-ranking executives within the company were unaware of it. Tian Yu had been having disagreements with the vice presidents in the company recently, and he planned to use the issue to increase his authority. He wanted to impress the headquarters and push the other vice president out of the southern city branch. Tian Ran realized that Tianran Pharmaceutical, the company monopolizing southern city, was just a subsidiary of a larger group. He slapped Chan Nan, urging him to wake up and asking if Tian Yu had reported the matter to the headquarters. Chan Nan replied that Tian Yu hadn't because the other vice president had connections at the headquarters, and Tian Yu didn't dare escalate the issue to them. Leaking information to that vice president would ruin Tian Yu's plans. He knew that the news hadn't spread widely yet, so solving the matter wouldn't be too difficult. He then told Chan Nan that he needed one last thing and ordered Xiao Tian to take him to see Liang Tian Yu. Later, in the office, the phone on the desk rang, and Tian Yu answered it. He asked the person, Chan Nan, on the other line if the mission was complete. Chan Nan replied in the affirmative, explaining that they had the target under control. But the target insisted on seeing him and an old man before revealing anything. Tian Yu was angry and scolded Chan Nan, considering them quite useless if they couldn't handle such a small matter without his personal involvement. Chan Nan apologized and mentioned that Tian Ran was very tight-lipped, and they had lost a few of their brothers in the process. Tian Yu agreed and instructed Chan Nan to take Tian Ran to warehouse number 78. He said he'd be there shortly and wanted to see. But Chan Nan hung up the phone before he could finish his sentence. This made Tian Yu angrily throw the phone on the sofa and swear that once he was at the headquarters, he would replace Chan Nan immediately. Meanwhile, in the car, the man holding the phone hung up, and Xiao Tian thanked Tian Ran profusely. However, Tian Ran informed Xiao Tian that his father, Nan, 
was just an incidental acquaintance, so he shouldn't get too sentimental. They drove away while Xiao Tian cried and continuously apologized to him. A minute later, they arrived at the warehouse and entered inside. Tian Yu, who was holding old Nan, asked Xiao Tian why it was just him and inquired about the whereabouts of Chen Nan and the messenger. Xiao Tian replied that the messenger had been knocked out and left in the car, and Chen Nan had a stomach ache and went to the restroom. He further explained that Chan Nan was concerned Tian Yu might grow impatient, so he asked Xiao Tian to bring him over first, with Chan Nan dressed in civilian clothes. Tian Yu looked at the injured Chen Nan, mistaking him for Tian Ran, and laughed. He called on Tian Ran to speak up and implied that he hadn't struck hard enough. He mentioned that the old man was there, and if Tian Ran talked, he'd set him free. However, old Nan was crying and tried to tell Tian Ran not to speak, as Tian Yu wouldn't allow any of them to leave there alive. Tian Yu became angry and kicked the old man to the ground, shouting at him to be honest, which left Xiao Tian shaking with anger. Tian Yu asked Xiao Tian why he was staring and ordered him to bring Tian Ran over while the men continued to kick old Nan. Suddenly, someone stepped on Tian Yu's face and forcefully slammed him to the ground, surprising his men. Tian Ran pointed a gun at Tian Yu's face and mentioned the difficulty of climbing the wall. The men worriedly called their boss, but he told them not to move, and Tian Yu ordered them to stay back. Tian Yu asked how this person had arrived, where Chen Nan was, and whether Chen Nan had betrayed him. He challenged the person to touch him, but Tian Ran questioned how someone of his intelligence had become the head of Tian Ran, and invested all his skills in being a heartless jerk. Tian Ran pointed out that his loyal subordinate was right there and indicated Chen Nan, who was in Xiao Tian's custody. Tian Yu angrily called Tian Ran a little brat and threatened that if he touched him, he'd have them kill the stubborn old man immediately. However, Tian Ran agreed, saying that killing him would be more cost-effective than harming unrelated people. Xiao Tian shouted to Tian Ran to save Chen Nan. Tian Yu then ordered his men to kill Old Nan, and he put his finger on the gun trigger. However, Tian Ran suddenly shot the men near Old Nan, leaving Tian Yu asking his dying men if they were stupid. Tian Ran shot Tian Yu in the head, killing Tian Yu instantly. A moment later, Old Nan thanked him for not holding him accountable for the foolish actions of his useless son and told him that he knew those apologies were futile, but he was still grateful to him. Meanwhile, Xian Tian was apologizing to him. He told Old Nan that he didn't support the guilt by association concept and hadn't done anything to harm him. However, Old Nan told him that he was also at fault as a father for not stopping Xiao Tian, making him guilty too. Tian Ran assured Xiao Tian that he didn't need to keep apologizing and advised him to let go of the idea because he didn't deserve forgiveness. He also assured Xiao Tian that he wouldn't harm him because it was unnecessary. As for what would happen next, but Xiao Tian interrupted him by swearing that they knew nothing about it and could trust them. He then asked how he planned to handle the situation there. He ordered Xiao Tian to gather the bodies together, to which Xiao Tian immediately agreed. He told them that he would bring the car in, prompting Old Nan to ask him what he was going to do. He responded by asking Old Nan what else they could do and answered that obviously, it was to eliminate all traces. Xiao Tian piled up the dead bodies and asked his father if Tian Ran was planning to burn the bodies. Old Nan, who was walking toward Chan Nan, replied that he thought so and that it was not easy to be exposed in the middle of nowhere. Old Nan dragged Chan Nan, but then Chan Nan grabbed a piece of broken glass and attempted to stab Old Nan. Fortunately, he dodged it in time, and it struck his knee instead. Chan Nan teased Old Nan that he managed to dodge it, and Xiao Tian, who overheard them, immediately looked back in concern. Chan Nan raised the piece of glass while shouting that he was on a dead-end road anyway, so pulling someone down with him before he died wasn't a bad deal. Then, he swung the piece of glass toward Old Nan, but Xiao Tian jumped in front of his father in time and got pierced in the chest instead. Old Nan was stunned in shock, and he screamed in agony for his son. Simultaneously, a truck struck Chan Nan. Tian Ran pinned Chan Nan to the wall with his truck and immediately came out to walk toward Old Nan, who was screaming in worry. Xiao Tian called out to him and confessed that his father was right, that he was a useless person and couldn't be a good person, but he didn't dare to be a bad one. He blamed himself for putting his father in such a dangerous situation due to his own selfish desires. He believed he deserved it and was willing to give his life back to his father. Xiao Tian also asked him to thank Han Han on his behalf while giving him something. He looked at the candy and wondered if the candies and the food that night were from Han Han because they seemed like something a child would enjoy. Xiao Tian closed his eyes and whispered, asking him to thank Han Han once again because the candy was sweet. As Xiao Tian remained still, Old Nan wept in agony, but then he rose to his feet, holding the piece of glass that had pierced Xiao Tian's chest, and walked toward Chan Nan. With determination, Old Nan raised the glass shard and repeatedly struck Chan Nan with it. Following this brutal act, they set fire to the entire abandoned building. 
bodies included. Later, on the balcony, someone frantically called Ren Zio and informed her of a major development. She inquired about the situation, urging the caller not to panic and to explain slowly. However, the caller shouted that they had discovered information about Liang Tianyu, revealing that Tianyu was dead. Ren Zio was so shocked that she spilled her coffee. Subsequently, she rushed to the investigation room and asked the examiner if they had confirmed his identity. The examiner affirmed that, despite the heavily charred state of the body, they had managed to extract DNA from the dental pulp. He confirmed that the bodies were indeed Liang Tianyu and Chen Nan. However, they couldn't find data for the other bodies in the genetic database, and no one had been reported missing. Due to a shortage of police resources, they couldn't conduct further investigations to confirm the identities of the deceased. Ren Zio stated that the identities didn't matter and asked if it was a murder or an accident. The examiner explained that it was a murder because several of the victims had bullet fragments inside their bodies, and the fire seemed to have been deliberately set using a car. Some of the bodies also displayed signs of torture before death. Ren Zhao speculated that someone had offended a ruthless character, but she wasn't sure if they were targeting Liang Tianyu personally or if they were targeting Tianren Corporation. She realized that if it was the former, she would celebrate with two bottles of red wine, but if it was the latter, they would be her enemies. Meanwhile, on the farm, he purchased a remote detonation device and asked Old Nan if he was sure he wanted revenge. Old Nan replied with a resolute yes, even if it cost him his life. He placed the device on Old Nan's nap while explaining that he had taken care of any traces that could be dealt with. However, he couldn't guarantee that Tianren wouldn't find any clues pointing to him. This was a reminder not to let what happened to Zio Tian occur again. Old Nan agreed and reassured him that he wouldn't allow it to explode, so he shouldn't worry. They then entered the farm, and he called Han Han, who was busy doing something. He asked Han Han what she was doing while Old Nan, who was at his side, couldn't believe that they had a robot dog inside the excavator and many hands and feet. He also noticed that even a little girl like Han Han wasn't scared, which made him think he might have gone crazy. Han Han panically replied that she was just playing a digging game and hadn't blown anything up. He told her that he had witnessed everything and asked her why she was lying. Han Han replied that she was afraid her big brother would hate her for being a violent child and wondered if he didn't want her anymore. He assured her that it was nonsense and asked her how her big brother could not want her. She then confessed that she had caused someone's death, leaving old Nan surprised and wondering if that was the reason. He reassured her that no matter what mistakes she made, he would be by her side to bear them together. He emphasized that she was his most important family member. Then, he gently held Han Han's face and told her that he was happy to see that she knew how to protect herself. She should just be herself, and he would guide her so that she wouldn't be burdened. He also praised her for dealing with those bad guys with evil intentions. He told her that if they didn't harm others, they couldn't prevent them from harming them. She proudly declared that she would protect her big brother from anyone who dared to bully him, even if it meant blowing their heads off. He laughingly agreed, saying he would do the same, making old Nan realize that the world was changing rapidly, and he needed to adapt to it. A moment later, he asked Han Han if she meant that she saw those people with a red color, and that's why she wanted to harm them. She nodded and explained that they had even knocked down the gate and interrupted her while watching cartoons. She also mentioned that she didn't like that particular color because it looked very unsettling. He inquired if others also had colors besides those people, and Han Han confirmed that they did. She described her brother's color as relaxing blue, Zio High's as approachable green, and Zio Tian's as red. Old Nan's color, she said, was gray with some green, and there were also passersby she had seen before who were gray. He realized that people emitting the red color had something in common. They all harbored ill intentions toward Han Han. Panicking, he asked Han Han if she saw anything else around people, like words or numbers, besides the different colors. He guessed that Han Han might also be a player. She replied that she didn't see anything like that, and he asked when she started seeing colors on people. She said it began about a week ago, making him realize that Han Han's ability only emerged after the start of the destruction season. However, Han Han didn't see the system, so she was definitely not a player. Most likely, her abilities evolved after consuming radiation-resistant vegetables. While he was pinching Han Han's cheek, she became silent, as she knew her brother did it whenever he thought about a problem. She told him that his smile was quite scary, and he explained that he was very happy. He also knew that the crops redeemed by the food system didn't have the same side effects as the radiation-contaminated crops out there. Instead, the probability of mutation was higher. Both he and Hanan had only been consuming radiation-resistant food for a few days, and their physical functions had significantly improved. Hanan had evolved the ability to sense other people's emotions, which was like a proximity program and essentially a humanoid reconnaissance device. As he continued to pinch her cheek, Hanan felt pain, thinking her cheeks were going to swell. 
He explained that his digital ability was called the Eye of Truth, and Hanhin's ability was called the Eye of Good and Evil. He praised her for having such a useful ability and assured her that she would be able to help in the future. He instructed her that if she ever saw someone with the red color in the future, she should immediately inform him because she would be his strongest assistant. He patted her, making her feel proud, and then asked if she was hungry. She excitedly replied, yes. A moment later, the food was ready, and as they sat at the table, he told Hanhin that Old Nan would live with them from now on and could also help with farm work. Old Nan mentioned that he didn't know much about the situation yet but would do whatever they said. Hanhin exclaimed that it was great because she'd have more time to watch cartoons and inquired about where Old Nan would live. Old Nan replied that he would build a thatched hut at the gate to live in and keep an eye on it. She asked Old Nan about her brother, Xiao Tian, and when he would live with them. Old Nan broke down in sadness but managed to tell her that Xiao Tian had gone to another world to atone for his sins. Hanhin cheerfully exclaimed that those glowing red and wanting to bully her big brother wouldn't live long. She vowed that anyone daring to harm her big brother or Xiao Hai, she'd have Da Bai blow their heads off. He praised Hanhin for being clever and told her to focus on eating. Old Nan thought it couldn't get any worse than it was at that moment, and his hands were already stained with blood. He believed that as long as he could help his son get revenge, he was willing to be Tian Ran's watchdog. Meanwhile, in some houses, a man was smoking a cigar while watching a woman on television announcing that it had been 15 days since the catastrophe, with a cumulative death toll of 38.6 million in Blue Star and 4.7 million in the Yanhuang Federation. She mentioned that the federal government was actively transferring grain reserves, and soulless cultivation technology would be put into large-scale production. Someone turned off the television, and the man called the old man father, asking what he could do for him. However, the old man only asked the man if he had read Ren Zio's report. The man replied that he had seen it and Liang Tianyu was dead. The old man informed the man that Tianyu had been a significant earner, and now the mutation process had accelerated. The military police headquarters had captured a level 5 mutated beast in the mountains of the southern border. The head office researcher, Bai Jingyan, inquired if a level 5 mutant beast had evolved and pointed out that their current research level was only at level 3 or the result of artificial catalysis. The old man explained that in the deep forests, with no human intervention, the radioactive vegetation was abundant. Even the lowest level species cannibalized each other, accelerating the intensity of mutation. He also noted that humanity's current technology was vulnerable to unknown natural evolution. The old man instructed Jingyan to take over the lab there, as Ren Zio had discovered that Tianyu's secret experiments used many interesting technologies. He suggested combining these technologies with what they had at hand and extracting the virus as soon as possible. Jingyan replied with an affirmative yes. Meanwhile, in the company, Ren Zio realized that the records before those two days had been completely normal. It seemed that the cause of Tianyu's death was within those two days, but the surveillance records of those days had also been deleted by Tianyu, and all clues were lost. She understood that dwelling on this issue would serve no purpose. Instead, she needed to decide on the location of the new research institute and welcome the new person in charge. She left her office and headed outside. A car pulled up in front of the building, and Jingyan emerged from it as people welcomed him to the southern side. He introduced himself to Ren Zio as Bai Jingyan, and she introduced herself to him as well. She inquired about the man standing next to him, and he explained that it was his assistant, Da Kui. Jingyan then mentioned that he had heard she had an approximate location for the new research institute and asked if she could show it to him. She readily agreed, mentioning that she had selected a couple of places on the outskirts of the city, allowing him to choose one. Meanwhile, on the farm, Tian Ran opened the livestock section in the system, selected the fish option, and saw the various fish levels, the points needed to purchase them, and the required levels. He clicked on the level 1 fish, and the system displayed level 1 salmon, bluefin tuna, trout, mackerel, herring, sardines, and more. He marveled at the variety of fish, noticing that the points required for different types of fish at the same level were the same. He focused on the bluefin tuna, a rare pre-apocalyptic ingredient now available for 500 points. He asked Hanan if she would like to eat a lot of bluefin tuna. Excitedly, she inquired about its cost, describing it as the redfish that melts in their mouths. He confirmed that it was expensive, but now they had the means to afford it, and they could eat as much as they wanted. She was amazed and eagerly expressed her desire to eat it. He put on his jacket, grabbed his shovel, and suggested they let Da Bai operate the excavator to dig a fish pond together. Han Han enthusiastically agreed. A moment later, he drew a circular line on the ground and told them to start digging there. Old Nan asked him how old Zio Hai was because it seemed significantly larger than before. He replied that it couldn't be the case because Zio Hai had already reached adulthood and wasn't supposed to grow anymore. Old Nan inquired if it could be the result of the farm's high-quality food causing weight gain. 
He recollected the time when he first arrived to help on the farm, recalling that Zhao Hai only reached up to his knees, but now it extended to his thighs. Upon hearing this, he realized that old Nan was correct. They spent every day together, and he hadn't noticed the changes in Zhao Hai's body shape. He feared that sudden changes in Zhao Hai's body might lead to a mutation, similar to Zhao Bai's. Since the disposal of all poisonous crops on the farm following Zhao Bai's accident, he wondered if Zhao Hai might have evolved from consuming radiation resistant crops like Hanhan. Thus, he decided to keep a close watch on Zio Hai to prevent any further incidents. Suddenly, the system alerted him about the presence of visitors, causing him to immediately look back, wondering who they were. Old Nan asked him what had happened to him. The system identified the visitors as two men and one woman, with a threat level of eight. Ren Zio asked Jingin if he truly didn't need to inspect the new location she had selected, which offered better equipment and improved security. Jingin replied that the current farm's location was excellent, adequately sized, and that they would transfer the security and equipment after purchasing the farm. He expressed satisfaction with their current location. She agreed, instructing him to proceed as he wished. However, she found it challenging to communicate with him, noting that he hadn't even considered the locations she had carefully chosen. She informed him that it had been a while since anyone had shown up, and she didn't believe they would show up this time. Nevertheless, he ordered Doc Yui to continue knocking. Tian Ran asked them about their intentions, and Jingyan inquired if he was the owner of the place because he had some business to discuss. Then, Jingyan asked if he could open the gate to enable a face-to-face -face conversation. But Tian Ran declined and urged them to speak there. He insisted that they should speak quickly as he was very busy. Jingyan acknowledged the chaotic situation outside, leaving Ren Zio wondering about Tian Ran's attitude. She cleared her throat and introduced herself as the general manager of Tian Ren Company, Ren Zio. She presented her card and stated that, in brief, they wanted to purchase his farm, allowing him to name his price. He couldn't believe that Tian Ren had already found his farm. While Ren Zio encouraged him to name his price, whether for supplies or anything else, assuring they would meet his request, and even offered a discounted place in a villa in the city center if he needed it. However, he replied that there was no need for it. She asked if he didn't want to hear the price, considering their reputation in the southern region. She suggested that he might change his mind after learning the offer. But he remained steadfast, expressing his love for living there, stating that not even a mountain of gold would change his mind. Suddenly, Doc Huey slammed his hands on the gate forcefully. The system warned him that it detected a minor attack at the farm gate with an attack strength of two and asked if he wanted to counterattack. He ordered the system not to attack, musing that Doc Huey's action had triggered a system warning with just one slam. Jing In shouted at Doc Huey, causing him to look back with concern. Then, Jing In slapped Doc Huey hard in the face, reminding him that he seemed to have forgotten what he was taught. He warned Doc Huey that if he acted without permission again, he'd be sent back to the devil's capital. Doc Huey apologized to Jing In, admitting his mistake and swearing that he wouldn't do it again. Tian Ran smiled, finding Jing In's response interesting. Jingyan told him not to take it to heart, explaining that his subordinate had acted out of ignorance. But Tian Ran suggested they ignore it and called Doc Huey over. Confused, Doc Huey walked toward him as he instructed Doc Huey to come closer. Suddenly, he punched Doc Huey in the stomach, implanting the hummingbird guard inside him, causing Doc Huey to kneel on the ground in pain. He told Doc Huey that he had punched his gate, so he punched his back, and now they were even. He then suggested that if there was nothing else, they should leave, but Jingyan simply smiled. And then Jingin snapped the paper with a number, apologizing for the inconvenience because it seems they have caused him trouble. Then Jingin gave him the paper while telling him that it was his phone number, and if he ever changed his mind, he could contact him at any time. He looked at them in silence, making Ren Zio think that he is rude and that he will definitely not answer. Then he snatched the paper from Jingin's hand, making Ren Zio shocked and telling him in her mind not to look down at them. They left while Jingin told him that he'd see him again. He looked at the paper and didn't expect the people from Tianren to find his farm so quickly, making him wonder if it was because they were searching for him or if it was only an accident while throwing the paper away. The system showed him that it retrieved Hummingbird Guard Number 1, making him see Jingyin's truck driving away and telling them that they would meet soon. He knows that there are only about 10 days left before the next destruction season, and the output of the plantation area is stable, and the digging of the aquatic area has also begun, but they still need to develop a livestock area too. Later, he finished preparing the food, and Han Han happily told him to try the sesame sauce she made because it was super delicious. He put his meat in the sauce while telling her that he'd try it, and when he put the meat in his mouth, he shouted that it was yummy, making Han Han proud of herself and telling him that in winter, they have to eat mutton hot pot. He tells her that it was so warm and fuzzy, and she sweetly agreed. 
making Old Nan ask them if they are a little underdressed and tell him that the current land can no longer be cultivated, so eating like it was a little too much. He tells Old Nan that he must have been curious for a long time, but he can't tell him any more details. Old Nan tells him that he understands and he shouldn't have asked in the first place because he has his secrets, but he disagrees and tells Old Nan that he just wants him to be mentally prepared. Then he tells Old Nan that the food he has there is not ordinary food, and long-term consumption of that food will cause some changes in the body, like immunity from the cold, improved physical fitness, and getting stronger. Also, it may even evolve some unusual abilities, so he was looking forward to his changes. Old Nan asks him what it is and tells him that it sounds like a science fiction movie. He reminds Old Nan that he said the apocalypse is just like a science fiction movie come true and if it wasn't for fossils, it would have been hard for mankind to imagine that the Blue Star was ever home to those huge prehistoric beasts. As things stand, there is nothing strange about having superpower, just like that apocalypse. Also, it's more like an evolution. Old Nan tells him that he doesn't understand what he is talking about, making him laugh, and tells Old Nan to just continue his dinner. Old Nan asks him if someone came today, and he replies that they are from Tianren, making Old Nan shocked and snap the chopstick in anger. Old Nan shakily asks him if he, a useless old man, can get stronger by eating the food from that farm, and he confidently replies, of course, making Old Nan sigh with relief and reply that he understands. After dinner, he tells them to rest early and he has to go out to do some errands. Then he came out using his motorcycle while the system showed him that it located the Hummingbird number 1 location, and the target was in Harmony Villa District. Meanwhile, in the villa, Ren Zio tells Jingyin that it is her house and she'll let him stay there tonight, but she'll arrange a new place for him tomorrow. Jingyin tells her that he'll have to trouble her while the hummingbird guard flies inside the villa. She tells him that he'll stay downstairs and there are four rooms he can choose from. She'll have dinner ready and delivered to his room, to which he replies okay. Before she walked up the stairs, she told them that they should rest early, and he tells her that she should rest early too. While she was walking up, the hummingbird was flying around her, making her annoyed and wondering why those mosquitoes were in such cold weather. After she showered, she put on her robe, thinking that her face looked so exhausted after that long day today. After taking a nice shower, she should do a skincare spa. She towels on her hair while looking at the mirror and asks herself who was the gorgeous beauty in the mirror. Then she tells herself that she was very good at her job and she was beautiful. She asks herself if she won't leave a place for others and she slaps her face softly when she applies her skincare, but the hummingbird flies around her again making her pissed and open her eyes. She irritatedly walks toward the window, thinking that it couldn't be mosquitoes because the sound of flapping wings was like a beetle, and she hated it. So, she decided to open the window and see if it could fly out. She smilingly opened the window and put her head outside, thinking that the air conditioner had been blowing for a long time, but it was so refreshing to get a breath of fresh air. But then she noticed something, and when she looked up, she saw Tianren climbing up with the rope. They were shocked to see each other, but then, he jumps into the room, shocking Ren Zio even more. He immediately covers Ren Zio's mouth when she is about to shout for help, making her cry in her mind that the bodyguards outside are useless. She is down on the ground, frustrated, thinking that she'll fire all the bodyguards and realizes that the man in front of her is so strong that she can't move at all. Also, she can't fight him, so she thinks she has to calm that thief first. He tells her that he'll let her go, so she shouldn't scream and not try any moves, otherwise, they will see which is faster, his knife or the bodyguards outside. She nods in agreement while telling him to calm down in her mind. When he lets go of her, she tells him that in the bedside cabinet, there is money, some jewelry, and gold, and he can take them all as long as he doesn't hurt her. Also, she will never call the police. He tells her that she was pretty cooperative, but she just tells him that the world is all about seeking wealth, and hurting her won't do him any good, so he should just take the money and leave quickly because it will be enough for him to exchange for a lot of food. He was amazed to hear it but told her that unfortunately, he was not there to rob her of her money, making her shocked and ask him if he was a pervert, psychologically distorted, or a pornographer. She also tells him that she had aid, so he'd be infected if he touched her, and is about to ask him what time to be thinking about such a thing. But he covers her mouth while telling her to stop and asks her if she sent someone to kill Tianyu. And why else would it have taken her so long to discover the murderer, making her wonder if it was not a robbery? He uncovers her mouth, and she asks him if he is one of Tianyu's men, knowing that Tianyu's confidants are all dead, makes her wonder where that person came from. He replies that Tianyu did him a great favor, but he died inexplicably, so he wanted to avenge him. He heard that she was currently investigating the cause of Tianyu's death, so she should give him all the information she had because he wanted to take a look. She realizes that he was there to voice his accusations and tells him that she and the police are investigating the cause of Tianyu's death, but the clues are too limited, and there is no way to pinpoint the real culprit in such a short period of time. 
He tells her that she took over Tian Yu's position when he died, so he guessed maybe it was her doing. She tells him that he has no evidence, and Tian Yu has made too many enemies on the southern side, so it was only natural for someone to take advantage of the chaos and kill him in the midst of it. Also, Tian Yu died so tragically, so it must have been a revenge killing. And she didn't have a deep grudge against Tian Yu, so it was not worth it to kill him for the position of the general manager. He knows that she is basically right and that the woman isn't stupid either, but he tells her that he can't believe they don't have any suspects. She tells him that there is really no suspect because Tian Yu destroyed all the documents and surveillance related to the recent conspiracy. Then she asked him how she was supposed to pinpoint a suspect when she didn't even know who he was interacting with before he died and tells him that she was having a hard time with that matter too. He was glad that Tian Yu wanted to have everything for himself and left no clues behind. She asks him if he will let her go. Suddenly, he hears footsteps rushing toward them and hears someone asking Ren Zio what was going on and tells her to open the door. He attacks her in the neck while Doc Huey is trying to open the door, and the housemaid tells Doc Huey that the alarm system went off, so something must have happened and begs Doc Huey to save Ren Zio. Doc Huey manages to break the door and immediately runs inside with the maid who sees Ren Zio collapsed on the ground. The maid holds Ren Zio and tearfully asks her what is wrong with her while Doc Huey runs straight to the window. Doc Huey shouts MD and tells him not to let the man escape. But at that time, he lands safely on the ground and can't believe that the scar-faced monster really broke the door down. Then someone tells him that breaking into a girl's bedroom in the middle of the night is a little too rude. He looks back and sees Jingin behind him. He asks Jingin how did he find him because he clearly left no trace behind him. Jingin replies that when he stepped on the gravity sensing device on the window, he asked Doc Huey to block the door, and if he didn't want to have a face-to-face -face conflict with them, he would definitely jump out of the window, and that would be his escape route. He fell silent, realizing that Jingin was exceptionally smart. He swiftly ran toward him, wondering if that bean sprout could stop him. He attempted to punch Jingin, but Jingin raised his knee, and his fist was blocked by Jingin's knee, surprising him. Jingin then leaped away from him. Jingin's knee was slightly injured, and he told him that it was interesting because the bones of the arm were nothing compared to the knee. According to his calculations, the ulna and radius of his forearm should be fractured now from the frontal impact force of 700 kilograms, and his carpal joints should also be crushed and dislocated due to their inability to unload that force, but he didn't show any signs of injury. Jingin then asked him if he had ever practiced martial arts, noting that he didn't see him using any special techniques. He asked him if he could answer that because he was very confused now, warning him that he wasn't going anywhere tonight. This left him shocked, his hand shaking in pain. He looked at Jingin in silence, wondering if Jingin had ever practiced some kind of martial arts because he couldn't believe Jingin actually stopped his punch. He knew that even though his current body's capabilities were beyond those of a normal human, it was still quite troublesome to be entangled with someone who could fight. Suddenly, he heard someone telling the other that there were sounds coming from their direction, so they should go over and have a look. He apologized to Jingin because he didn't have time to play with him and told him that the next time they see each other, he'll beat him to death. However, he was surprised when he saw Jingyin leaping toward him, ready to attack, reminding him that he told him he was not leaving tonight. But then sand was thrown in Jingyin's eyes, making Jingyin close his eyes in pain and cough on the ground, giving him a chance to run away. While running, he told Jingyin that he was leaving, so he should go back and wash his eyes. Jingyin turned around to look at him, shouting that he was despicable. However, Jingyin's eye was damaged because of the sand, and he couldn't see him properly while he was saying goodbye. When he landed out of the villa, the bodyguards rushed toward Jingyin, who was continuously coughing, and asked him if he was okay. Jingyin tried to stand up and thought that Tian Ran was very smart and was simply in perfect physical condition, almost beyond human limits, which is excellent material. He told Tian Ran in his mind to just wait, and he was going to find him. He told the bodyguards that he was fine and he just has to wash his eyes. The bodyguard told him to be careful and asked him if he wanted them to go after that man. But he told them not to go after him because that man is very fast, and they can't catch him. Then he asked how Ren Zio was doing and ordered them to check on her. The next morning, he checked the condition of Ren Zio and told the maid that it was nothing serious because the intruder just knocked her out. After she wakes up, she should take those pills from the medicine cabinet, and he already wrote the dosage on them. The maid told him that they'd better call the police, but he told the maid that the southern side is so chaotic now, and no property has been found stolen, so it's better not to cause trouble for their comrades in the army and police force. The maid replied that she'd listened to him and that she didn't know what would have happened if it wasn't for him. Suddenly, Doc Huey appeared, telling Jingin that there was bad news and reported that he just checked his room and found that there was a hard drive missing. He asked Doc Huey if it was the gray hard drive that was plugged into his computer, and Doc Huey replied yes without them knowing that last night. 
Tian Ran ran with it in his pocket and drove back home. Meanwhile, on the farm, Tian Ran thought that if he disconnected the network cable, there would be no problem, and he'd like to see what that Tian Ran company wanted to do. So, he plugged in the hard drive into his laptop. He saw a file named Experiment Notes, making him wonder if Jingyan was a researcher. When he opened the folder, he read that even though a large number of creatures died because of it, Jingyan still firmly believed that the world was a better place than it was before, realizing that it wasn't a confidential document from Tianran. He then read other notes stating that the radioactive foods that cause dramatic changes in limbs and body shapes of beasts and humans are not, in themselves, a catastrophe. They bring more than just death and deformity to living things, it was evolution. He also read a note saying that it was just that they took the wrong path of evolution, so they died halfway. Jingin firmly believed that he could find the right path, even at the cost of human life. He would let mankind enter the next civilization because of that catastrophe. At that time, human beings won't be forced to separate due to terminal illness, won't be born prematurely due to congenital anomalies, and won't be regarded as a liability due to lack of strength. They will be able to rival tigers, leopards, and gods with their human strength, live to be 300 years old, and, regardless, at the end of the road, what greets them would be death or supreme glory. Meanwhile, in the villa, Du Qi tells Jingyin that there has still been no luck with the search. Jingyin tells Du Qi that maybe the other party used some means, or maybe they haven't looked at the contents of the hard drive yet because the mother disk isn't picking up any signals from the daughter disk at all. Du Qi asks Jingyin if it was important information, frustrating him. Jingyin tells Du Qi to forget it, saying that the hard drive was full of old data anyway, and it would be difficult for outsiders to understand it. However, Jingyin knew that if his notes were seen by those people, they may have truly guessed that he came to the southern side for the real thing. Du Qi tells him that it was too much of a coincidence that they were attacked just as they arrived on the southern side and asks him if it could be Number 7 who did it. Jingyin tells Du Qi that if Number 7 really wanted to take action against them, he wouldn't have sent such a rookie to do it. That person's physical fitness is very strong, but his skills are very raw. On the other hand, Tian Ran reads Jingyin's notes, saying that there is darkness ahead of him, but behind him, there is an abyss, so there is no way back. Dated November 21st, 2025, in the Yan Huang calendar, and by Jingyin. It makes him realize that Jingyin's ideas coincide with his, but the words at the cost of human life make him wonder if they have already started human experiments. The next day, Hanin calls him Big Brother sweetly while looking at Level 1 Bama's Yang Pig Cub, Level 1 Windsor Rabbit's Cub, and Level 1 King Yuan Chicken's Cub, asking him where he got all those furry little cuties. He thinks for an answer, knowing that Hanhan may not understand a complicated explanation. While Hanhan is busy loving the bunny, Zio Hai is crying in jealousy. Then, he tells her that he has a Doryman treasure bag, and he can take out anything he wants from it. Hanhan excitedly asks him if it is really true and tells him that he is indeed her big brother. He informs her that it is a secret between them, so she can't tell anyone. She immediately agrees, making him relieved that she understood very quickly. However, he sees the rabbit full of crayons and tells Hanhan not to play around with the precious food. She should put it back in the shed quickly. She is shocked to hear that it was food and tearfully tells him that it was so cute, they shouldn't eat it. She wanted to keep it, and it was still so small. But when he tells her that he could cook spicy rabbit meat with it, Hanan stops crying. Seeing her reaction, he continues telling her about foods like pork chop rice, chicken pot, pork bacon burger, spicy rabbit pot, Hanan chicken rice, grilled chicken leg, Saudi diced rabbit with pickled pepper, and rice pepper ginger rabbit, making Hanan freeze in her place. Then he tells her that if she doesn't want to cook the rabbit, then she will have to become a vegetarian. Hanhan, who was frowning, tries to disagree, so he smilingly tells her that she should be grateful for the hard-earned food and then eat it all without leaving any bite because it is the greatest respect for food. Developing relationships with it can be painful, so she should leave it to him. She thinks for a moment but in the end, gives the rabbit to him and tells him that from now on, she will eat it all without leaving a single bite. Suddenly, the system congratulates him because the plantation has produced a rare product called albino corn. It tells him that he should harvest it as soon as possible, making him wonder what it is. Then he tells Hanhan to go ahead and play, and he'll check out the cornfield for minutes to which Hanhan agrees and runs away. Then he heads to the cornfield and sees that the rare item, level 2 albino corn single-use consumables, is ready to harvest. Its description says it is an extremely rare mutated product produced from anti-radiation corn, and its probability is 1 in 100,000. 
Also, its effect is to put the user into a state of rage, increasing strength, speed, and reflexes by tenfold, and its effect lasts for 30 seconds. He can't believe that it can make the user go on a rampage while increasing physical strength by tenfold within 30 seconds. Then he picks it up, knowing that it is totally like Popeye's spinach and wonders if it is the only one. Then he thinks he should find out if there are any more rare products, but when he looks around in his farm, he sees nothing. He sighed, guessing that finding that kind of rare product is really hard and can only occur when he is lucky. He knows that when planting seeds, the system absolutely doesn't mention anything about special products. So it was kind of a nice surprise. It seems necessary to do some intensive farming, making him decide to increase their amount. However, he wonders if that doesn't make the chances of producing a rare product from corn much higher. He shook his head, realizing that it was putting the cart before the horse. Increasing the amount planted will certainly increase the probability of producing rare products. However, that will worsen the quality and yield of crops and may result in a large number of weak and dead plants. So he knows that he just has to farm honestly and not think about bugs because what he still needs most now is points, and rare products can only be considered the icing on the cake. Meanwhile, in Ren Zio's house, in her bedroom, she was busy watching the CCTV from the night before. She angrily calls Tian Ran a damn bastard and swears that she is going to dig him up, and then she is going to cut him into pieces. Then she shouted that those security guards were all a bunch of idiots because there were so many of them, but they failed to catch a single thief. The military and police also simply had no extra manpower to investigate, making her realize that if she wants to find out the identity of that person, she can't use formal means. Then she looked at the hair in the plastic, remembering that the hair stuck on her clothes was too light, which was obviously not hers. She thinks that it must belong to the man who attacked her that night. She clears her imagination while telling herself not to think about that bastard and shouts that she will definitely catch him. Then she comes out of her room and tells Jingyan, who was on the sofa, that she needs to talk to him. Jingyan asked her if she was feeling better and she replied that it was thanks to him. The massage technique he taught her was really effective and she couldn't feel the pain at all today. Then she tells him that she has already chosen the location for his research institute. It isn't far from the farm and it was originally a factory but due to the sudden changes, the factory closed down. So it was sold to them at a low price and its location is pretty good, quiet, and remote, meeting his requirements very well. He apologizes to her for the trouble and tells her that since she came to see him, he was sure there was something else going on. She tells him that honestly, that matter was quite embarrassing. But she thought since he was an expert in biological research, he must be able to do a DNA systematic comparison. She'd like him to help her find a DNA match for that hair on the southern side. He tells her that if she wants to make a comparison in the entire southern side, it is tantamount to finding a needle in a haystack, not to mention the time it will take to complete the comparison of nearly 100,000 copies. So just getting DNA samples from everyone on the southern side is a huge undertaking. Then he asks her if that person is that important. She awkwardly replies that it is not that important, and she just wants to find the intruder who attacked her that day. But if it's that difficult, they should forget it. Jingyin is stunned in shock to hear it and springs up while shoutingly telling her that it is not difficult at all. Then he excitedly tells her that he is willing to help her with that matter, making her confused but thanking him. Later, in the laboratory, the system showed that the reagent injection solution was completed. After injecting the reagent into the experiment, the system displayed that the experimental subject's muscle fibers seemed to thicken significantly, and cellular activity increased a thousand times, recording the data now. Then the subject slowly changed its appearance, and the system revealed that compound eyes appeared. The experimental subject's genes had been contaminated by other organisms. The subject broke free from its chain, and the system warned that the experimental subject appeared to be in a violent state and broke free from the restraints. The subject hit the glass continuously, while the system showed them that the shaped virus B34th experiment failed, and the outer glass was shattering, so immediate destruction was activated. Then it killed the subject right away. A moment later, in Ren Zio's house, Jingyin saw a lot of formal people walking around, and in the middle was a kid asking the kid named Jingming why he left his pathetic little brother there alone. Jingming told the kid not to talk nonsense because it was not his little brother, and he was just a bastard while looking at young Jingyin separated from everyone. Jingming asked the kids if they should go and tease Jingyin, to which they all agreed. A moment later, the kids were drowning Jingyin in the fountain and laughing, telling each other to hold Jingyin tight and make him drink until he was full because a bastard is a bastard, and Jingyin is really such a disgrace. Jingming told the kids to take it easy and not to leave any marks on Jingyin because even though Jingyin is a bastard, Jingyin's surname is Bai after all, and he has to live up to the old man's expectations, to which the kids laughingly replied that they know, while Jingyin was coughing in pain. 
Jingyin begged his big brother Jingming to let him go, and the kid laughingly told Jingming that Jingyin even called him brother, making Jingming pissed and telling him that he was such a dirty bastard. He woke up in a sweat and sat up immediately, shouting not to hurt him. He put his hand on his head in frustration and caught his breath. Then he looked at the injection, telling Jingming that nowadays, V-shaped viruses have become more stable. As soon as he can create the perfect mutant, he won't be far from beating him. Meanwhile, in the news, the reporter announced that it's been 19 days since the world changed. Their reporters told them that large numbers of mutated livestock carcasses were found in Nachai town, exceeding a hundred in number, and they are of unknown origin, piled up there. The epidemic prevention department has already disposed of the remains. He asked Hanan why she isn't watching cartoons today and if she started watching the news. Hanan poutingly told him that he always treats her like a child, and she has been following the news too because she can't hide behind him all the time. He told her that she can see people's evil thoughts, which is already helping him. But she told him that she wants to grow up quickly and help him more. Also, Zio Hai is getting stronger, so she has to get stronger too. He thinks that he has been watching Zio Hai for a while now. And Zio Hai doesn't have a tendency to go berserk, so the changes in its body shape would be due to the evolution from the anti-radiation products, making him feel relieved. Then he tells Hanhan that he and her uncle Nan will go to continue digging the pond, and when she gets hungry, she should find some snacks for herself. One hour later, Hanhan was lying on Zio Hai, pouting that her big brother was right because she was a little hungry. Then she noticed something on the table, making her wonder what it was. She opened it, and inside was the Divine Gain Seed, which is level 4, but for her, they were just glowing nuts, and they looked delicious. Then she showed it to Zio Hai and told it that there were exactly two, so one for each of them. She shoved one into Zio Hai's mouth and ate one for herself, but she spit hers out because it was bitter while still holding Zio Hai's mouth closed. She shouted that it was too hard and she needed to rinse her mouth, but Zio Hai swallowed it whole. Then Zio Hai didn't know why he felt a little sleepy, so he bent down and closed his eyes. A moment later, the inside of the house was destroyed, and a dog was barking continuously, making Nan wonder what that sound was. Then Nan walked around to find that sound and saw blood leading to something on the side. Zio Hai looked at Nan glaring, shocking him. Suddenly, Zio Hai jumped toward Nan and opened its mouth to attack Nan, making Nan shout in fear. Fortunately, Nan dodged it in time, making him let go of his flashlight. Then Nan immediately looked back, wondering what it was, and saw that it was Zio Hai. When he stared at it, he noticed that Zio Hai really became like a wolf, making him wonder if it was because of mutation. But he noticed that it seemed different from normal mutant animals, and there seems to be no sign of further attacks on him, so he decided to try to calm Zio Hai down. Then he called Zio Hai to introduce himself, and Zio Hai began to look around, making him wonder what it was and if there was a reaction. He tried to reach for Zio Hai while asking if it was hungry and telling it that he'd get it some food, but Zio Hai barked at him softly, which meant a warning, making him stunned in surprise. Then Zio Hai jumped out the window, making him surprised and calling Zio Hai continuously. Zio Hai stopped for a moment and jumped off the fence, making Nan couldn't believe that Zio Hai really climbed over such a high fence with ease. Tian Ran ran speedily and asked Nan what happened. Nan replied that it was bad because Zio Hai suddenly went crazy and ran outside. Nan explained that he didn't know why Zio Hai suddenly went crazy, but it didn't look like any of the other mutant animals out there because it seemed to recognize him, making him surprised. But then Han Han ran toward them and told them that Zio Hai is gone because when she woke up, it wasn't next to her bed. He worriedly asked Han Han what she was doing out there and told her not to worry because Zio Hai might have been bored from staying at home for too long. It will come back after running around for a while, and she should go back to sleep because it'll be okay. But Hanin told him that Zio Hai never leaves her side when she was sleeping and asked him what her uncle Nan meant by going crazy. He just asked her why she came there without wearing her shoes. She jumped at him and told him that she was worried about Zio Hai. Then she asked him what if Zio Hai becomes like Zio Bai. He told her not to think too much and asked her if Zio Hai has eaten anything special recently. She confidently replied that she always remembered what he said, so all they ate was farm food and they ate from his box that had glowing nuts in the afternoon, making him wonder if it could be the level 4 divine gain seeds. He realizes that Zio Hai must have evolved, but he wonders why it went crazy and if consuming level 4 grain seeds has the side effect of making the creatures lose control. He tried to call the system continuously for an answer, but it didn't respond. So he told Hanhan that he would go and get Zio Hai back, so she should be good and go back to bed with her uncle Nan. She told him that he must bring Zio Hai back, and he told her not to worry because he will definitely get Zio Hai back, and Zio Hai is their family. Meanwhile, Zio Hai was speedily running outside, feeling hot and really wanting to tear into fresh meat, and then bite the throats of all living creatures. However, he knows that he can't hurt humans, otherwise, he'll never be able to return to his young master again. 
On the other hand, someone behind the tree saw Zio High and noticed that it was a sacred animal, and it must be the sacred animal in the oracle. The man thinks he must bring it back, and God will definitely be very happy. On the other hand, in some parts of the forest, patrol level surveillance guard number one reports that there is no finding, and number two reported the same, making him guess that Zio High is no longer in that area. But he knows that he has to get Zio High back quickly because if the military police find it, Zio High will definitely be killed. Suddenly, he felt someone behind him, making him look back and ask who it was. The old woman asked him if he was looking for a black wolf dog and if it was his dog. He thinks the woman was a weird old woman but asked her if she saw which way it went. The old woman asked him back if she knows the truth behind that apocalypse. He tells the old woman to just tell him where his dog went because he is not interested in knowing anything else. But then the old woman shoutingly tells him that it is because people have done too much evil, and they have angered the gods. So the gods have sent down disasters to punish them. Also, that apocalypse will not stop until all the human race is extinguished. And if he wants to save himself, he must join their self-help society and make a sincere confession to God to have a chance of survival. He wonders what kind of new missionary scam it is and asks the lady if there are any conditions for joining their self-help society. The old woman replied that they have a hierarchy of membership in the self-help society for all beings, and different levels require different membership fees. Also, it differs from 3 to 300,000, and the higher the level, the closer he is to God, and the greater the chance of salvation. But since he was the master of the sacred animal, he can just bring the sacred animal to join the club. But he just tells the old lady that when she has time, she should learn more about brainwashing and deception before she comes out to fool people, making the old lady shoutingly ask him how dare he be disrespectful to God. He apologizes to the old woman and tells her that he was a little late in the game, and he didn't have time to play games with her. Then he asks the old woman if salvation can be achieved through piety and drives away, telling the old lady that it'll be him who saves himself. The old lady stared at him and said that those who do not believe in God will fall into hell for all eternity, and they, the lowest of the low, were maggots. Then he remembered he had stopped on the side of the road to smoke when he heard barks nearby, making him wonder what that sound was. He opened the bush where he heard the sound and saw a dog dead in its own blood with a little one. He guessed that it was hit by a car while crossing the road, and there was also another little one. He picked the small one, couldn't believe that it was still alive, and judging from the look of that dog's mother, it must have been dead for a few days. He looked at it for a moment and told it that there are also lots of people who have lost their parents, so it should just come home with him. Meanwhile, somewhere in the forest, Zio Hai was growling while biting someone's leg, and the men were looking at them. One of the men shouted to his comrade that they should shake it up because Zio Wu won't be able to hold on any longer. Suddenly, Jingin came out of the building and asked the men how that mutated beast could get in. One of the men replied that Zio Wu got addicted to smoking, so he went to the woods to smoke and flick the cigarette butt at that beast, and the beast got violent and attacked him. Jingin asked the man how dare they do it, and the man explained that the beast was hiding in the bushes, and Zio Wu didn't see it. However, they have contacted the military police to handle it. Jingin asked the man if he said that the beast was lurking in the bushes, and the man replied that it was right. Jingin knows that low-level mutant beasts would simply wander around irrationally, following the heat of living creatures, so it must be a high-level mutant beast. Moreover, that mutant beast only bit the security guard's leg but didn't kill him, making him guess that it knew the danger of guns, trying to use the security guard to hold them back, and it was simply terrifyingly clever. If they captured it and studied it, they might be able to break through the instability of the V-Virus, and it was the perfect mutant beast that he has been looking for. He orders the man to get all the men he can because they must capture that mutant beast alive before the military police arrive, and they must be equipped with tranquilizer guns and sedatives. Also, they should remember it has to be alive. Then the man gives him a tranquilizer gun, and he orders them to be careful and only aim for the limbs. Then he aimed his gun and fired it towards Zio Hai, but Zio Hai noticed it and jumped away in time to avoid it. They begin to shoot Zio Hai with a tranquilizer and hit it a little, so Zio Hai attacks one of the men in pain. Jingin reloaded his gun in frustration and heard someone shout that it was going to run away. Then Zio Hai jumped away while Jingin ordered the men to chase it. Meanwhile, in some parts of the forest, Hummingbird Number 2 reported to Tian Ran that large dog paw prints were found 700 meters southeast, so he immediately rolled his motorcycle around to go there and was shocked to see paw prints with blood. He noticed that it was a big paw print, and the color of the blood was relatively fresh, as if it had just been left there not long ago, making him guess that it must belong to Zio Hai and wondered what happened and how Zio Hai got hurt so badly. On the other hand, three cars are chasing after Zio Hai. Inside one of the cars is Jingyan, realizing that no mutated animal can move at such a fast speed, making him more and more excited. Then, Jingyan noticed Zio Hai's muscle tone while running, and it was a beautiful creature. He knew that he must catch it. 
In another part of the forest, the hummingbird reports to him that it found the target. He immediately orders the hummingbird to show him. Then he positions his motorcycle in front and sees cars chasing after Zio Hai. He orders Hummingbird to zoom in and zoom in more because he wants to see the tracker's face. He recognizes that it is the tech nerd again, making him wonder why that nerd is after Zio Hai, and if he wants to capture Zio Hai for research. He opens his inventory and grabs the albino corn, thinking that those bastards won't get away with it. On the other hand, Jing In and the men are shooting Zio Hai continuously while chasing it. Jing In orders cars 2 and 3 to surround Zio Hai from both sides and try to drive it into the old factory up ahead, which the men do and attempt to surround it. Zio Hai notices them, jumps higher while avoiding the attacks, then lands on one of the cars and pierces its claws to grab the men inside. Zio Hai bites the man while the car number 3 reports to Jing In that car number 2 is down. The man fires his gun at Zio Hai, calling it a bloody beast. The tranquilizer flies towards Zio Hai, making it stunned in surprise. But when the tranquilizer is near, someone grabs them in time, and a powerful person gets down on the ground. He throws the tranquilizers away, and the system shows him that eating the albino corn is entering the frenzy state with a remaining effect time of 26 seconds. Car number one, where Jing Yin is, stops. Jing Yin wonders what that white light is, and Zio Hai wonders if it is his master while they look at him. He speedily vanishes and attacks the enemy swiftly while his remaining effect time decreases from 20 seconds to 12 seconds. Jing In tries to shoot him while asking what the hell it is, but then Jing In is stunned to see that white light in front of him. Then, he punches Jing In in the face hard, but Jing In blocks it with his hands in time. Still, Jing In coughs blood. Suddenly, the remaining effect time reaches 2 seconds, making him feel weak. He immediately jumps away, realizing that it is not good, and understands that the thing has side effects. Jing In is glad that fortunately, he was able to block it, otherwise, his life would have been in danger. Then Jing In points his gun at him, thinking that he is too dangerous, so he must be eliminated. But then Zio Hai jumps in time before Jing In puts his finger on the trigger, and Zio Hai bites Jing In in the neck when Jing In releases his bullet. Tian Ran gets hit only in the shoulder, and Zio Hai's teeth pierce Jing In's neck in anger. A moment later, Zio Hai is carrying him on his back when he regains consciousness. Zio Hai is catching his breath in pain while carrying him, and when he calls for Zio Hai, Zio Hai stops and throws him down on the ground before falling too, making him shout Zio Hai's name in worry. He tries to stand up and walk towards Zio Hai to ask how it is, but he is shocked to see Zio Hai shaking uncontrollably and convulsing. He calls the system to ask what the hell is going on and continuously tries to call the system in panic while looking at Zio Hai in pain. Without knowing that inside Zio Hai's body, Zio Hai's gene broke when it drank Jing In's blood, and the divine gain slowly shattered into pieces, releasing a new gene inside Zio Hai's body. Then, a huge shining web comes out inside Zio Hai, making him call Zio Hai in panic. But the webs wrap around Zio Hai and cover it completely, making him look at it, knowing what it is. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Jing In is lying while the doctor apologizes because the situation is very pessimistic. Jing In received a hard blow to the head, so his pituitary gland was concussed, and the blood vessels in his brain were squeezed, especially the fatal wound on his neck. It's a miracle that Jing In has made it this far. The man apologizes to Ren Zio and tells her that they have done their best, but Jing In's chances are really small. She tells the man not to explain it to her and that it is their duty as guards to protect the researcher Jing In's safety with their lives. Now, Jing In is lying on a hospital bed with his life and death uncertain. The man apologizes to her again and explains that Jing In was really so intent on capturing the mutant animal that he took off first with the advanced team. By the time they got there, the advanced team also suffered heavy losses, and only Doc Huey survived. She tells the man that it's enough because she doesn't want to hear excuses and asks the man if he saw the attacker's appearance. The man replies no and explains that it was a very fast white light, making her shout at the man that if he was going to make up a story, he should make up a decent one first before trying to fool people. The man swore to her that it was the truth and he was not lying making her fume in anger and tell the man that they paid them a lot of money and she was not there to listen to their shirking their responsibilities. Suddenly, the doctor tells her that Jing Yin's heart rate is dropping drastically and there is another hematoma in his brain. She shoutingly tells the doctor to rescue Jing In immediately, but the doctor tells her that it is pointless because Jing In can't be saved and it's better to listen to what else Jing In wants to say in his last moments making them stunned. Then the doctor ordered the nurses to give Jing In a shot of adrenaline which they did and made Jing In wake up. Jing In immediately calls Doc Huey and Doc Huey immediately replies that he was there. 
Jing and ordered Doc Huey to inject him with the V-shaped virus making Doc Huey shocked and disagree, then explained to Jing in that there had been no human successes yet, so if it failed, he won't even be able to rest quietly in his grave with a complete human body. But Jing in tells Doc Huey that dying like it or dying as a monster was no difference to him, so they should let him make a bet this time because he don't want to lose just like it. Doc Huey agreed and the doctor told them that he'd inject 5 ml of V-shaped virus agent into him and prepare the shackles and the bomb neck collar. Then the doctor asks Jing in if he wants him to call the Bai family back. But he replies that there is no need for it because they are just people who happen to share the same blood as him and it was not his home, so they should get started. Then the doctor injects him with the V-shaped virus. He shakes uncontrollably while the virus spreads inside his veins and he shouts in pain while his DNA is changing because of the virus. Ren Zhao looks at him in horror while Doc Yui just closes his eyes. Meanwhile, in the forest, the web slowly broke into pieces and Tian Ran was shocked to hear it. Then he looked back and saw that the web had started to break. Then the web broke into pieces and Xiao Hai came out of it making him stunned and shocked to see Xiao Hai walking out of it with feet and hands like a human. He stared at Xiao Hai for a moment and asked if it was Xiao Hai in disbelief, but it just stared at him and grabbed his injured shoulder, making him surprised and shout in pain. Meanwhile, in their farmhouse, Nan tells Han Han to be good and not to wait any longer, to go back to sleep because Xiao Hai couldn't have gotten that far, and Tian Ran would be back soon. Nan, who was shaking in the cold, tells Han Han that it would be bad if she caught a cold in such cold weather. However, she replies that she is not cold, she is in good health now and will just wait there for her big brother to come back. Nan is about to disagree, but Han Han tells him not to hold her hand if he doesn't believe that she is very warm, and Nan holds her hand, making him tell her that it is really true. Nan also tells her that it is amazing how much a person's health can improve by eating the food from that farm, and she tells Nan that she's an evolved superwoman. Nan agrees to accompany her and wait for Tian Ran to come home but tells her to sit with him as his baby warmer, to which she agrees. Hours later, the sun is slowly rising, making Han Han wake up because of the light and open her eyes. Suddenly, she shouts Big Brother, making Nan wake up too. Han Han runs to the gate while telling Tian Ran that he is back and asks him if he has found Xiao Hai. However, she stops in amazement and worriedly asks her brother what is wrong with him while looking at her brother in the hand of a huge dog. Xiao Hai, who has just evolved, still can't control his strength very well. As a result, Tian Ran's wounds opened, and a fracture occurred. He tells Han Han that he brought Xiao Hai back, making old Nan and Han Han surprised. Later, Xiao Hai with a race of Czech wolf dogs is being dressed up by Han Han, who excitedly tells him that he has changed a lot. Tai pants were hot, she wants him to lift her up, and he still has the familiar blue color of Xiao Hai. Xiao Hai picks up Han Han, realizing that his little mistress is still so naughty, while the system shows that Xiao Hai's evolution type is atavistic. His age is 3, strength is 30, intelligence is 10, speed is 42, spirit is 10, hunger is 5, and his evaluation is that he is a Czech wolf dog with human genes. Also, he was genetically evolved, and his data will improve dramatically. It should be noted that there is no upper limit on those data, making him realize that, in other words, Xiao Hai lost control before because of the atavistic gene that caused it to go berserk. So, it escaped because it didn't want to hurt them, and it integrated with human genes. Could it be during the time Xiao Hai bit Jingyun? Nan tells him that he brought the medicine box and laughingly asks Nan if he could sterilize the knife because he wants to dig out the bullet in his shoulder. Nan gives him the sterilized knife and asks him if he is really going to dig it out directly and what if it gets infected, but he just tells Nan to rest assured. Then, he pokes his shoulder with the knife and takes out the bullet inside it. Afterward, he retrieves the ancient medicine-grade carrots, making Nan shocked because the carrot appeared out of thin air. Then, he consumes the carrot, making Nan wonder if it could be the miracle cure. Suddenly, his skin comes alive after he consumes the carrot, and it slowly heals the bullet hole in his shoulder. After that, his wound is healed, his broken bones restored, and there is only pain left. He knows that the genetic cells in the bodies of all living creatures on the planet are constantly replicating and fissioning, with old cells dying and new ones replacing the old ones to maintain life. During the process of fission and replication, the cell is stable most of the time and will completely replicate all the elements of the old cell. Under certain conditions, a new gene might suddenly appear at a site, replacing the original gene, and that is called a mutant gene. Also, gene mutations are categorized into two outcomes. The first is beneficial development, just like him, Hanhin, and Xiao Hai. It allows their bodies to add new and beneficial functions to their original functions, and he calls that evolution. The second is bad development, just like the many mutated animals in the world currently. They have terrifyingly strong limbs and great strength, 
but with fatal flaws in their genes. Even if they are lucky enough to regain their senses, they won't live long, and it's just a way to survive. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Jingyin wakes up and breaks the chain holding his hand easily. The doctor shouts that Jingyin is awake, and Jingyin can't believe that he survived. The doctor shouts that it's simply a miracle because no human being has ever retained consciousness after being injected with the V-Virus. He tells Jingyin that his success this time means that their experiment will move to the next stage. However, Jingyin tells them that it's not that simple. He did survive, but it doesn't mean that the V-shaped virus mutated him perfectly because his mutation is still a failure. He has greater strength and speed than normal people, but his body structure is still altered for the worse. He also tells them that he has a maximum of 7 days to live if he can't find the perfect mutated creature and get its DNA. In seven days, he is still going to die. A moment later, Jingyin, who evolved because of the virus, was fixing his clothes. Then, Doc Huey arrived and told him that Detective Yuan from the Southern Side Military Police Bureau was there. He replied that he understood, and Doc Huey asked him if it wouldn't be appropriate for them to investigate the intruder and alert the military. He explained that he was well-versed in boxing, Muay Thai, Sambo, grappling, Sanchu, and several other deadly martial arts. He also had a 65 kg Golden Dragon badge from the Federal Sanchu Association, and his reflexes and physical fitness were more than 2.8 times that of an average adult. In other words, he could already be called one of the strongest people in the world. There are not many people who can defeat him head-on. However, the person who attacked him, in other words, couldn't be considered human at all because that person's power source was the same as that perfect mutant wolf dog. That person should also be a perfect mutant, or perhaps, their perfect mutations all came from the same source, which explains why that person came to rescue that wolf dog. That man's movements reminded him of the other guy from before. Doc Huey asked him if he suspected that the two were the same person and if it would be a good idea for them to know about their hard-earned research results. He replied that he knew what he was doing, and the virus hadn't yet allowed him to reach the state of perfect evolution. But if that information could lead him to the perfect mutant, he could afford to do it because, after all, he didn't have much time. Then, he met Detective Yuan, and the lady looked back to meet him. He apologized to her for keeping her waiting and hoped his appearance didn't scare her. She told him that it didn't, and Yuan Wen, the Southern Side senior police officer, asked him if it was what he said the military would be interested in. He grabbed his shirt to open it while excusing himself to her and told her that, as she could see, he was in a state that would normally be impossible to survive because that bone spur would gradually grow as his body developed. When his heart is pierced, that's when he'll die, so he doesn't have much time. He also tells her that in exchange, he expects her to give him her full assistance in finding that person while showing her the hair and telling her that the sooner, the better. Yuan Wen thinks for a moment and tells him that it was a pleasure to work with him. Meanwhile, in their farmhouse, the system showed Tian Ran that he purchased 19 level 4 divine level powerful seeds. Xiao Hai and Han Han were sleeping peacefully. The system showed him that the level 4 divine level powerful seed category was cherry tomato, and its effects promoted genetic fission for the one who consumes it. It enhanced the beneficial development of genetic fission, prevented the negative development of genes, and promoted evolution. He smiled as he looked at the seed, knowing that, in other words, the main direction of level 4 seeds is to promote evolution, and that is simply the key to a new era for mankind. He also knows that if humans become gods with that kind of thing in the future, he wonders if he will be the god who created the gods. But he notices that its planning conditions are very harsh, and if he wants to plant it, he needs to use a lot of points to level up the land first, which is so expensive. Still, he has to buy it. Then, a moment later, the system showed him that he had spent 95,000 points to purchase a good land upgrade coupon 19 times, and his remaining points were 5,680,000. He upgraded his ordinary land 19 times to good land, which was nutrient-rich black soil that could grow crops above level 4 and had a yield-boosting effect on crops below level 3. He saw that there was not much time left before the second wave of the destruction season arrives, and the growth agents are also that expensive. Still, he purchased growth agents 12 times, knowing that those growth agents have limited effectiveness in promoting ripening of level crops. He thinks he should add a few more agricultural robots to speed up the planting. Then, he looks at his robots working while thinking that he still has to save points to buy ordinary seeds to upgrade his farm, and he has to do his best to get as many ripe crops as possible before the second wave of the destruction season arrives. Meanwhile, somewhere in the city, people in robes walk toward the huge building's entrance. The old woman asks the man if it would be possible for her to meet the Holy Lord as a human being with her humble body. The man replied that she just needed to tell the Holy Lord exactly what she saw, and the Holy Lord would make his judgment. 
Also, although she hadn't attracted the required number of believers that week, as long as that information was true, she can still get enough gifts from the Holy Lord. The old woman shouts that it was so wonderful, repeatedly thanks the Holy Lord, and mutters that her family could hold out for another month. Only those who worship the Holy Lord devoutly could survive in that apocalypse while the building entrance was opening. Then they enter the building, and when they arrive at the center, the man reports to the Holy Lord that the pure sheep sent a letter saying that a new holy beast had been discovered. The higher man, who represents the Holy Lord, looks at them, and the higher man orders the man to tell him about it. After telling everything to the Holy Lord respectfully, the higher man claps, saying that it was good and it would make the Holy Lord even more powerful. The man in the suit congratulates the Holy Lord with the nourishment of the new holy beast, and tells the higher man that the Holy Lord will be able to complete his emergence soon. Then the suited man asks if he can take a look at the recent one. The higher man replies that he could take them away because the Holy Lord had been tired of eating those little desserts, and all he had to do was bring back the sacred beast and sacrifice it to the Holy Lord. Suddenly, something inside the huge deep hole hisses and is about to say something but the higher man tells it that he knows and calls it Lord to thank it for its kindness. However, it just hisses again and says that it wants to eat wolf cubs. Well guys, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, comment part 4 in the comment section. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time again.